today. Miss? Could you give me a second, sir? Was not your day. Could I maybe get that headset, please? Do not raise your voice to me, sir. I wasn't raising my voice. Is there a problem here, sir? About what? There's not a problem. And what is it with you people? Calm down. I'm calm! What if tomorrow? This court hereby orders you to undergo 20 hours of anger management therapy. Was even worse. Anger management? Dave assaulted a female flight attendant. Hey, nice. <laughs> that should be her good. All right, girls. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Where should we put my stuff? What stuff? By the way, I like to sleep in the nude. He's just not used to male intimacy. Oh, well, that's okay, because I am a lady. Oops. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, there it is. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Adam Sandler. Because I refused to spoon with you last night? In a comedy that brings the pain to the surface. Oh, what did you say about Buddha? How does a guy who weighs over 600 pounds have the balls to teach people about self discipline <laughs> Anger Management. Healing September 26 on Showtime. Wedgie! 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 Basketball, a new season of NBL hoops it up. Two live games a week throughout October on Fox Sports. It's how to to the rescue. I'm all set. Let's do it. All right. Whether you need a little help with that special project around the house, or you're just looking for a new weekend challenge. Really important when you're starting this project or any project to be very organized. How to has got the programs that show you all those handy tips and tricks for jobs that can be done in just two days. Welcome to weekend gardening, where cool garden ideas come to life with just two days of work. From gardening to decorating, remodeling to landscaping, your weekends will never be the same again. Today, we're going to spruce up this entry with new lighting fixtures, a pathway, tile, and lots of plants. Project Weekend, Friday nights from 7.30 on the How To Channel. A lot easier with Lincoln on your team. For details, see your... The world's leading cricketing nations have their eyes on just one prize. The ICC Champions Trophy. Who will be crowned the finest one-day team? Australia versus United States. Tonight at 7, Fox Sports 2. When it comes to secret agents, they're smooth, they're sophisticated, and then there's English. Completely innocent to the untrained eye, but click it twice. Johnny English, premiere Sunday on Showtime. Fox Sports serving of Top Line Tennis continues. The Games Elite are all set for maximum gain in Spain. Keen to be crowned the Master of Madrid. Next stop, Paris. It's the last chance to impress as the series reaches its finale. Then the heat is on in Houston at the Tennis Masters Cup. Only the best in the business get an invite to this elite tennis party. The ATP Masters Series continues live and exclusive Fox Sports. Tomorrow morning from the Premiership. The action continues with the Addicts up against the Saints, live at five. And there is no substitute for class. The Barclays English Premier League, live and exclusive on Fox Sports. weekend around the National Football League. We welcome you back to the home of the Washington Redskins. And for our national anthem, let's go down to the field.
That was Sean King, the wife of Larry King, doing a beautiful rendition of our Star Spangled Banner. And now we'll get an early look, guys, at the Tampa Bay offense. And I guess the preseason was about the same for each side, maybe more so defensively for the Redskins as it was offensively for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that is because of one injury after another, these two teams are really now all coming together here on opening day. And I guess they have to find out exactly what they have on that offensive line for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Well, we're anxious to see what these teams come out and do and, and how well they're able to come out and play. But these coaches are also eager to see how they're going to come out and play because for the most part, as you mentioned, especially Tampa Bay offensively, these 11 players did not spend a lot of time in the preseason playing together. And they have had some practice time, but it's kind of a new look for them. And when you talk about the Washington Redskins on the defensive side, especially now with Greg Williams as their coordinator, they are going to bring pressure, and a lot of it. And many times when your offensive line hasn't spent much time together, that's very difficult to pick up. Well, every Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan knows there's only one way for their 28-year history they've been hoping to open a season, and that's with a kickoff return for a touchdown. That has never happened, returning a kick for a touchdown in their franchise history and waiting deep will be Frank Murphy number 15 and Bill Schrader longtime Green Bay Packer for a short while with Detroit wearing number 11. I think Schrader's grown about six inches in the last year. Yeah, and he was he always been already. that tall. Well he's, he, he's always been tall but he, he you're right he, lo he looks like he has gotten a little taller maybe he's leaned up some but let me tell you this guy can flat out fly. Kind of Joe Jurevicious light as they wait to get him back. Let's have some fun today. This is Murphy. Murphy with a nice return to start the day for Tampa Bay, and they will end up with very good field position as the ball will be marked at their own 34. Kari Campbell on the tackle and a return of 30 yards. And here comes Brad Johnson. I guess the headlines during the offseason. Nice season, Brad, but John Gruden's looking elsewhere, and he went all over the map looking at Brunel, offered a contract to Garcia, and of course trying to figure out what was happening with Gannon out in Oakland. Blitz already on first down, and that's Garner going backward. This offensive line like this Tampa Bay Buccaneer team not exactly young and they are anchored on the outside of that O line by Derek Deese and Todd Stussy. The featured back and the question is can he still be a featured back is Charlie Garner. Quick throw, pass is complete. That's Clayton, and he is wrapped up instantly. A gain of only one. So look at the defense, led by Greg Williams, a defensive coordinator, assistant 
head coach up front they have to get some push and if they don't they're going to get their pressure guys from this group of linebackers. Sean Taylor is not starting. Andre Lott is. Word on Taylor. He was sick during the week, banged up, and being consoled as he is not out there on this first series. Third down and ten. The pass to Dudley. Complete fourth down. It's all the Bucs talked about. They didn't want to start with a three and out. Wanted to get a good roll going early and that did not happen and I think what we're going to see early in this game Joe is a little bit of a dance between John Gruden and the defensive coordinator for Washington Greg Williams trying to figure out what each guy wants to do at least on the first series Greg Williams won that battle and we're seeing LeVar Arrington already after three plays in a different spot on all three snaps this is Josh Bidwell another newcomer with an end over end kick and it will be down just outside the 30 by Greg Camella. Only a 29-yard punt. I'll tell you, a very shaky start for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They came out, they looked nervous. The Washington Redskins defensively attacked, and the Buccaneers really didn't respond. What a great opening to this ball game so far for Joe Gibbs and the Redskins. Another year, another starting quarterback on opening day. It's been five in a row. Brad Johnson, who we just saw for Tampa Bay, then George, Matthews, Ramsey, and now Brunel. And Chris, you believe Brunel is good enough to get him there. Well, it's a veteran quarterback who's not going to turn it over, and that's what Joe Gibbs wants. 340! 340! Hot, hot! Quick throw, and it's dropped by Gardner. Was it a forward pass? They're ruling incomplete immediately. And that'll bring up second down and 10. That, for Joe Gibbs, can be their outside running game. That quick hitch, that quick throw to the outside. And guys, if there's one change from a year ago, from Steve Spurrier to Joe Gibbs, it's Joe Bugle directing these offensive linemen, and it is protection for the quarterback. And what did Monty Kiffin tell us last night? He says, heck, not only does Washington get Clinton Portis, the best runner in the league, but then they got Joe Bugle coaching up the offensive line. It's not fair. It's just not fair. Blake blocked down to four, and the second throw. This is Gardner on the other side, and he is wrestled down right at first down yardage. Brian Kelly on the stop. They're going to see Garner on the outside, and they're getting one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. Typically, Tampa Bay's known for a lot of their cover two defense. They've shown a lot of cover one already early in this ball game, and you see the arm strength of Mark Brunel. I know watching him in practice on Friday, you know, obviously he's here trying to prove that he's still got some years left in him, but I was impressed watching him throw the football around. He's got plenty of arm strength still to play. They didn't get it off. You can see the frustration and hear it. Offense, five yard penalty, first down. He needs a good arm and good vocal cords here at the beginning to try to set up that last play. The Buccaneers up front. The big change, no more. Warren Sapp. Simeon Rice last year had four sacks in a game against the Redskins. A thrashing by Tampa Bay over Washington. There are the linebackers. Very good and all at one time pro bowlers in their careers. And in the secondary, no more John Lynch. Jermaine Phillips starts with Dwight Smith. Lonnie Kiffin, the defensive coordinator for Tampa Bay. Portis, welcome to Washington. Clinton Portis, goodbye. No flags, touchdown. Buccaneers defense working against them. What a spectacular opening play for him. 
The Washington Redskins were decidedly vanilla in the preseason, not showing much of their offense under Joe Gibbs his second time around. What a great start for Gibbs and the Redskins today. Nine thirty tonight on Fox Sports One, the most comprehensive roundup of all the weekend's Premier League action. The Premier League Highlight Show. Great goals, controversies, and no doubt a thousand talking points. Oh, wonderful! He almost tore the net off. Can you believe that? Catch all the action of the Highlight Show tonight at nine thirty, Fox Sports One. Quite incredible. Friday nights, it's how to to the rescue. I'm all set, let's do it. All right. Whether you need a little help with that special project around the house, or you're just looking for a new weekend challenge. Really important when you're starting this project or any project to be very organized. How to has got the programs that show you all those handy tips and tricks for jobs that can be done in just two days. Welcome to weekend gardening, where cool garden ideas come to life with just two days of work. From gardening to decorating, remodeling to landscaping, your weekends will never be the same again. Today, we're going to spruce up this entry with new lighting fixtures, a pathway, tile, and lots of plants. Project Weekend, Friday nights from 7.30 on the How To Channel. It's one of the last great sporting events founded on prestige rather than prize money. Spanning 34 competitions over 77 years. For golf's golden chalice, discover the history, importance and strategies behind this great team event before the 35th Ryder Cup tees off live and exclusive on Fox Sports Countdown to the Ryder Cup Wednesday night, 8.30 Fox Sports 1 What a start for Clinton Portis and the first 50 yard or more rush in the last 60 games for the Washington Redskins and a young man who's in his third year over 1500 yards in each of his first two with Denver Going to get a lot of work this year with Joe Gibbs calling his number, and he is one for one. It's Murphy again. Penalty flags on the play as Murphy finds room to run. Murphy down the sideline, thrashes there for the Redskins, and Murphy ran out of gas. But there are penalty flags all over the field. And we'll see if this is coming back. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 37, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, you know, if Tampa comes that close to returning one for a touchdown, there has to be a little cheating going on. They've never had one. Let's go back to the touchdown now, though. Watch Greg Spires. He's going to come in, so that means that. Shelton Quarles is going to have to fill this hole in this gap defense. He over pursues. He tries to pick up Clinton Portis going front side. He bounces it backside and simply nobody there. A lot of people questioned whether or not Clinton Portis was going to be able to come in here and run some of the counter gap running game that Washington's known for. I think all doubts have been erased now. 64 yards later. The skins are on top and the Bucks get another try with a football but they've spotted Washington seven points quick throw and a completion for basically nothing to Galloway Smoot was there all eyes are on Smoot with Champ Bailey now in Denver and this is a guy playing for a contract and he's got to show that he can be the shutdown corner well and he's excited about this season for that very reason Joe he did play in the shadows of Champ Bailey for so many years and now he gets an opportunity to to be one of the elite guys in this league A little bit of a hurry up offense for Tampa Bay and the handoff is to Garner. And Charlie Garner got seven. Of course, Charlie Garner getting the start today because Michael Pittman suspended because of a domestic dispute. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and just call it that. But Charlie Garner is a guy that really can create some instant offense for the Buccaneers. Probably a better receiver coming out of the backfield than he is a runner, although he's awfully good running the football. Dynamic guy. With a personality to match, he's explosive. Third and three. That's a toss. Garner running right. 
And he's brought down a yard shy of a first down. Marcus Washington, a newcomer from Indianapolis, on the tackle. And it's another three and out. And I think one of the hard things, Joe, for John Gruden and this offensive team is trying to figure out exactly what Greg Williams is going to try to do against them defensively. Remember, Greg Williams, first year here as a defensive coordinator, came from Buffalo. John Gruden said he had to go back and watch a ton of tape on this guy, all the stops that he's been at, trying to figure out how he was going to implement this personnel and how they were going to attack him defensively. Another Bidwell punch. It can only be better than the first, and it is. Wharton has the back cut. Well covered downfield by Tampa Bay. And now the Buccaneer defense will try to make up for that first series. Washington with the ball and an early lead. There's nothing quite like the sweet sound of a great drive. He's been doing that all day. There's nothing like pulling an ace. Magic! There's nothing like sinking that crucial putt. In the hole! Boy, what a good-looking shot. And there's nothing like winning on the US PGA Tour. And that's more like it. The Canadian Open. This morning at 5, live and exclusive on Fox Sports 1. It's a hot topic of debate. Do they have the right to do that? Right. When seasoned experts go head to head. That wasn't the only off-field drama. And cover all angles of argument. Uh, oh, no, I've always had problems with politics and sport. Because there's a lot more to sport than what happens on the field. Yeah, my marriage has ruined my golf career too. <laughs> when you want to read between the lines and get the facts straight. They realise they do have to toughen up. Flick to the back page. Tonight, 7.30, Fox Sports 1. When it comes to secret agents, they're smooth, they're sophisticated, and then there's English. Completely innocent to the untrained eye, but click it twice. Johnny English, premiere Sunday on Showtime. 9.30 tonight on Fox Sports 1. The most comprehensive roundup of all the weekend's Premier League action. The Premier League Highlight Show. Great goals, controversies, and no doubt, a thousand talking points. Oh, wonderful! He almost tore the net off! Can you believe that? Catch all the action of the Highlight Show tonight at 9.30, Fox Sports 1. Quite incredible! Brad Johnson with the shoes untied, the helmet off, the hat on, and the Buccaneer offense wondering what's happened to him here. Two series, three and out. It has been a swarming, overwhelming defense for the Redskins here early. Second possession, 7-0. Washington on top. gain of two and we welcome in for the first time in the regular season Pam Oliver. Hey Joe just to add a little something about the mysterious disappearance of rookie safety Sean Taylor from the starting lineup. Yes indeed on Monday he did have a virus but the Redskins say he returned fine after their off day that he practiced well and he seemed to be okay. Now I've been told by someone close to the situation that Taylor's being held out of the lineup on defense so far because of a precautionary measure. He has been out on kickoff return coverage, but that is about it, Joe. We'll keep an eye on that to see how that develops. All right, second down and eight. And the handoff is to Portis. He's carried it three times, and this time he gets two. That'll bring up third and relatively long for Washington. You know, it really is interesting to watch how the Buccaneers are going to try and play this thing. Derek Brooks talking to him on the field before the game. Of course, the outstanding linebacker and all-pro for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers said, you know what? We just have to slow ourselves down. This is an offense and a running game that takes its time. It has a lot of cutbacks. We can't over-pursue, and they got burned on that one big play. Third down and six. Protection for Brunel. Fires wide open as Gardner, and he's got a first down in midfield. Again, this offensive line doing a good job of protecting Mark Brunel. And as I mentioned earlier, when he's got time, he can be dangerous. Ron Gardner now, he's already gotten off to a fast start in this game. 
They over pursue. They've got two guys going to the flat, a break in coverage. That's linebackers that are supposed to be getting underneath that inside curl route. Right now, Tampa Bay defensively is having breaks in assignments. That shift confused them on the last one. They were out of position. Dakota Coles trying to make a move. Stays on his feet. Nice play. Good run by Lavernius Coles, a gain of eight. Lavernius Coles, he's the home run threat for this football team. He's coming off of a toe injury. Says he's only about 90% healthy right now but 90 percent of Lavernius Coles is a lot better than most I did ask him which quarterback he liked the best and he said oh what difference does it make all we're going to do is hand off anyway so but he's going to get his opportunities especially if this running game goes the way that it's going well I'll tell you what anybody who would say that hasn't watched Joe Gibbs in the past and what he's done offensively you would ask that question second down at three Portis Another handoff and another first down. And I really like what Washington's doing right now. Obviously, they're trying to establish the running game. And we take a look at Joe Bugle, who's really done a great job. Of course, they lost John Jansen. Chris Samuels, their left tackle, gets banged up in preseason. But to a man along that offensive line, they have credited Joe Bugle for giving them confidence and coming into this season feeling like they're going to be a real strength for this football team. A much maligned group last year working under the offensive scheme of Steve Spurrier. Senior Fox Box, the offensive leaders and their numbers scrolling across the top will have scores for you the entire game on the Fox Box. As Portis will try the right shot. And that's supported well by Kelly on the stop again of three. And Joe, I think what we're seeing a lot of, obviously, is the off-tackle stuff, some of the misdirection, the shifts in motions, things that, that we expected coming into this ball game with Joe Gibbs. You touched on it a little bit earlier. The passes that they've thrown to the outside, the quick wide receiver screens, they really are like outside runs. But what they do to a defense is it makes these guys, Tampa Bay is known for their speed. It makes these guys run sideline to sideline, and you try to tire them out, and that, in essence, is why they're doing it more than anything else. Second down and seven, showing blitz, and here they come. Brunel off his back foot, completes it. That's Gardner again. He's been busy, a gain of five. It's just so important for a quarterback and for an offense, the first time they really get blitzed in a ball game, to pick it up. They're going to come right off the edge up here. Brunel is just going to step up, make the throw, complete it. Now Monty Kiffin, as the defensive coordinator, says, eh, I'm not quite as anxious to go out there and try and come back with those blitzes. Forces defenses to play more straight up. Well, the big thing is, is not they don't they don't even get a hit on Brunel. I mean, you want to at least when you blitz, if you can't sack him, you want to at least rough him up. Brunel's able to throw that one standing up. Brunel has a pocket, throws, it's tipped and nearly picked off. You know, one of the big matchups today is going to be Chris Samuels at left tackle working against one of the premier pass rushers, Simeon Rice. And as you're going to see, he comes out, Simeon Rice trying to use a speed rush on him. And that's an athletic move by a big guy and Chris Samuels being able to get out on him and get him on the ground. But that's going to be a great contest to watch throughout the rest of this game. Barber made the play. Smith almost ended up with it. Now with a field goal unit, Walter Rasby is late getting on the field. They still have time on the play clock. This will be a 50-yard try from Hall, who hit four 50-yard or better field goals last season. Good snap, good hold, the kick. Won't draw. Wide right. That keeps it 7-0. And decent field position for the Buccaneers when we come back. The flair of tennis's richest slam, the U.S. Open. It's also the last chance to secure a Grand Slam title this year. The men's singles final this afternoon at 1.30, Fox Sports 2. Meet the stars behind the game with Tui's new snapshots. In, in one incident, broken collarbone a couple of uh, fractures in the face and 100, 100 stitches uh, in my face as well, so that was a nice one. Uh, West Indy, probably my arthroscope. I've had both knees done. Uh, two broken feet at the same time. Oh, detached retina. 
Uh, I've been very lucky with injuries. Uh, just a couple of small breaks in the, in the finger from trying to take catches from Jeff Thompson's bowling. Ooh, so many. How many hours do we have? I'll keep it simple. Torn AC, torn rotator cuff, 20 mil hole in my super splenitis, and I played eight games with it. Don't let anyone tell you I'm not tough. It's the people who make the sport on Tui's new snapshots. Tui's new. What mates do? This weekend on Fox Sports, Gulf's three-day war begins again. The USA and Europe head-to-head -head in the 35th Ryder Cup. Isn't that unbelievable? In cricket, the ICC Champions Trophy. South Africa take it to the Windies and intense rivalry reignited as India meet Pakistan. Live and exclusive. Absolutely stunning. Catch four live games from the English Premier League. And Dr. Rossi carves up the kilometres. The Japanese MotoGP exclusively live at Fox Sports this weekend. That's Hall. That's John Hall with the towel over his face and sitting in front of the fan. And that's the look of a man who just pushed wide right a 50 yard try. Good start for Brunel. Seven to nothing. The Redskins out in front. The Bucs are still looking for their first first down. Safe throw and it's dropped by Galloway. They are trying to get Johnson going, but so far it's not working. This morning it was Giant star Michael Strahan. Now it's your chance to tell us who you want to see go 10 yards with TV on next week's pregame show. Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN and choose from Tony Gonzalez, LeVar Arrington, Michael Vick, and Jake DeLone. Tune in later to see who was selected. Second down and ten. Blitz coming from Bowen, and he knocks it out. The Redskins fall on top of it. Griffin has it. Bowen knocked it out. As Michael Vick learned last week, you better be ready for everybody to come in this defense. That time, Matt Bowen around the top, and instead of going for the sack, strips the ball. The Redskins are hot. The world's leading cricketing nations have their eyes on just one prize, the ICC Champions Trophy. Who will be crowned the finest one-day team? Australia versus United States, tonight at 7, Fox Sports 2. This September on the Comedy Channel. My uniform, I do not wear the regulation uniform. I wear these uh, shorts here. Yeah, I gotta be able to move like a cheetah. It's fantastic police parody. Law enforcement cheetah. The Aussie premiere, Reno 911, plus the finest stand-up from around the world. It's the World Comedy Tour 2004. I like kebabs. They're honest. With the kebab, you know you don't know what you're getting. We've got the Aussie premiere of Kid Notorious, a.k.a. Robert Evans. Hollywood producer, lover, fighter, smooth operator. Kelly, I didn't know you were in here. Mm, I did. And the bitch and stripperella catch the ample talents of Pamela Anderson as the stripper turned superhero in another Aussie first. It's time for you to take a ride on the ass kickinator. <laughs> Live life impulsively. So, how long have you two been dating? Actually, we're not dating. Oh. We're married. It's the brilliant Dahmer and Greg. Pardon? He said there. I heard him. <laughs> That's September on the Comedy Channel. 9.30 tonight on Fox Sports 1. The most comprehensive roundup of all the weekend's Premier League action. The Premier League Highlight Show. Great goals, controversies, and no doubt, a thousand talking points. Oh, wonderful! He almost tore the net off! Can you believe that? Catch all the action of the Highlight Show tonight at 9.30, Fox Sports 1. Quite incredible. By State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome back. A 7 to nothing Redskins lead with under 5 to play in the first quarter. And this is indeed a chess match. You've got John Gruden against Greg Williams. You've got Monty Kiffin against Joe Gibbs. Circle gets a square. Jim J. Bullock to block. First and ten for the Redskins. Brunel off his back foot for Cooley, and it is juggled and dropped. Nearly picked off. 
It's our first game break of 2004, and it is James Brown. Hey, Joe Buck, excellent second effort here by Thomas Jones, capping a six-play, 58-yard drive for the Chicago Bears. Thomas Jones looking for a home, his third team in five years. Lovey Smith boys are up 7-0 over Detroit. Back to Joe, Troy, and Chris. All right, JB, thanks. No interceptions for Brunel in his last 92 attempts. That supports what you said earlier, Chris. He won't turn it over. But he was lucky on that one. That one should have been picked. Second down and 10. Brunel swings it out. That's Clinton Portis. He went one-on-one, -on -one, and that was well played by Ian Gold. Free agent pickup from the Denver Broncos. A torn ACL in his right knee last year, and the Buccaneers went out and got him, and they are thrilled that they did. Yeah, they really are. It was a great pickup for them because Tampa Bay is always looking for speed on that side of the ball, and he certainly provides that for them. And He had a great career. While he was at Denver, played very well for them. You talked about coming off of the knee injury, but he's gotten over that. He's had a good camp, and they're expecting a lot of big things out of him this season. One of the fastest linebackers in the league, knee injury or no. Third down for the Redskins. Toss to Portis. He has Samuels out in front of him, and Clinton Portis scoots across for a first down. Well, these offensive linemen for the Redskins better be able to run. Well, the offensive linemen can run, but watch the wide receivers block. I believe it's James Thrash who's going to come in short motion down from the top of your screen and get the crack back on Simeon Rice and really sets up Clinton Portis around the outside. Everybody blocks in this offense. Lavernius Coles was the guy coming down that got the block. First down. Not much for Portis running right. Gain of only one. This Tampa Bay defense was ranked number one in the NFL two years ago when they won the Super Bowl in John Gruden's first year. Last year they slipped to fifth. And this year they don't have Sapp, they don't have Lynch, so they're trying to find an identity. Well, I think when you look at this Tampa Bay defensively, last year everybody was talking about, hey, all you got to do is run the ball right at them. They feel like that's not accurate assessment of their defense, but yet here we are in the first quarter and seven rushes and 82 yards already for Clint Portis. Here is Betts on a delayed handoff, and Liddell Betts is about a yard shy of another first down. And they're just taking it right at him, Joe. You know, they've done some tosses to the outside, but you take a look. I mean, here they come again, just a straight lead draw handoff, but... You look at the movement that's happening all up inside. Anthony McFarland, who is now playing the three technique, taking the place of Warren Sapp. But right now, he is getting knocked off the ball along with the rest of that defensive line. Third down and a short two. They stay with Betts in the backfield, a bigger back. Adele Betts will fight his way and get a first down. Sometimes football games are decided by individuals. That time the Buccaneers had this play covered and Liddell Betts simply outplayed them. He's out in the open field. There are going to be at least a couple of shots on him, a couple of jersey grabs. He makes the move, picks up the first down. Unbelievable effort by Liddell Betts. One of the things Tampa Bay defensively has always prided themselves on is the ability to tackle. They're not doing a good job in this game. to go in the first quarter. It's Portis looking for his second touchdown and he was flattened. Well, he was flattened, Joe, but it happened about seven yards downfield. And, you know, again, the offensive line for Washington and right now they're just winning the battle in the trenches. And Troy, the biggest change for Joe Gibbs coming back is with that counter tray action, they can no longer get two offensive linemen around. They just don't feel like that works. So now, more often than not, it's Chris Cooley, the H-back, coming up and leading, and it gives him a little bit more athletic guy turning the corner to lead that play. 350! 350! Hunt! Toss to Portis, trying to pick his way toward the end zone. And 
Clint Portis has brought down shy of the first down, and we are through one quarter of play here in Landover, Maryland. The Redskins already have seven in Joe Gibbs' return. They love it here. They're knocking on the door for more points. Fast start here for Washington. The NFL on Fox will continue after this. There's nothing quite like the sweet sound of a great drive. He's been doing that all day. There's nothing like pulling an ace. Magic. There's nothing like sinking that crucial putt. Boy, what a good looking shot. And there's nothing like winning on the USPGA Tour. And yeah, that's more like it. The Canadian Open. This morning at 5, live and exclusive on Fox Sports 1. Fox Sports 1 wraps up the weekend in a great lineup from 7.30 every Monday night. Following Fox Sports News, an hour of topical discussion from the back page team. That wasn't the only off-field draft. Now, I've always had problems with politics and sports. At 8.30, NRL scoreboard takes the ball and runs with it. Inside winners and scores. Oh, no. two leverage. You're kidding me. At 9.30, it's the Premier League Highlight Show, your one-stop roundup from all the weekend's action. Oh, wonderful! Monday night has what you need on Fox Sports 1. Take a crash course on survival on A1. Meet some guys who thrive on risk where tiny errors mean life-size terror. X-Power. Five friends embark on a journey to test themselves. The road is long when you're cycling Mongolia. The world's best aerobatic entertainers blaze on the premiere of Beyond the Horizon. Unleash the spirit of adventure this month with A1. Experience A1 only on digital. Upgrade now. When it comes to secret agents, they're smooth, they're sophisticated, and then there's English. Completely innocent to the untrained eye, but click it twice. Johnny English, premiere Sunday on Showtime. Gibbs picking up right where he left off. A 146-yard first quarter for the Washington Redskins. Hey, keep your eye on that one right there. That's how Joe Gibbs wears teams out. They just keep pounding and pounding, and in the fourth quarter, you have nothing left. When Portis is on the bench, he may be a little dinged up. I got his bell rung by Jermaine Phillips on that big hit. So Dell bats in the backfield, and it's Brunel. Quarles knocks him down shy of the end zone, but good enough for a first down and a fresh set inside the two. So a really great job there by Mark Brunel. This was not a designed quarterback draw. He drops back looking to find Lavernius Coles on the play. Can't find him, but he sees an opening up in front. A great veteran move there of knowing what he had to do in order to get up there and go for the first down. How about the play by Kenyatta Jones taking over for John Jansen at the right tackle position, just pancaking his guy and allowed that first down to be picked up, we believe. By inches, that looked to be a questionable spot. You know, and that is something that you can challenge. You can take a look from upstairs, and Joe Gibbs actually has a former referee in the booth to help him with those situations, but here's they're going to kick a field goal. Well, surprises me a little bit. Yeah, I thought they might go for it, but Joe Gibbs didn't hesitate. You saw him. He immediately said field goal. As soon as he realized that they were short of the first down, I thought that they might go for it as well. Well, the way this offensive line has been plowing through the Tampa Bay front on their defense, they elect to go for the three points. Hall just 50. He drills it from 20. So a 10 to nothing Redskin lead just underway, second quarter. Bowen set up those points for the Skins. Sports 2 this Sunday afternoon. Get your fix of MotoGP live from midday. Whoa, here we go again. Someone's gone down. The place has gone crazy. Once again, it's Valentino Rossi. The MotoGP from Japan, Sunday at midday, live on Fox Sports 2. Can Rossi do it again? 
Foxtel Box Office is changing how you see movies. With sessions commencing every 30 minutes, you choose what to watch and when. It's like having a cinema at home. So in September, what's it going to be? Johnny Depp and Jeffrey Rush in the epic adventure, Pirates of the Caribbean. There's just something about Polly. Ben and Jen in Along Came Polly. Angelina Jolie is Lara Croft. Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. Nicolas Cage is a con man with a conscience in Matchstick Men. Get ready for the next generation of secret agent, Agent Cody Banks. John Cusack and an all-star cast in the thrilling drama Runaway Jury. The best sound, the best pictures, the best movies. Foxtel Box Office, where movies come first. Major League Baseball reaches the playoffs with the Divisional Series, the League Championship and the World Series all live October on Fox Sports. There's no question in our minds up here that the Redskins just got a terrible spot. Brunel is going to dive, clearly cross the two-yard line, which is where the mark was. And for Joe Gibbs, a missed opportunity. If he had challenged that play, I think this would have been shown to be pretty decisive that it was a first and goal and giving his team another shot for a touchdown. You say well what about the elbow. Well the elbow came down way inside the two yard line which is where as Chris said the marker was and yet no challenge three points and a 10 up and lead. Murphy's third return has room to run. Great return by Murphy, which is exactly what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers needed. No flags on the play. Great field position at the 34-yard line for the Bucs. And you have to say that right now, Joe, the Buccaneers are really lucky. This isn't about a 17 to nothing game. They have done nothing offensively. They have done nothing defensively. And maybe their special teams can finally wake them up. Well, that was a, an area of importance in the offseason, trying to get something going in their return game. They have returned the ball well here today. They had the penalty on the second return that brought them back, but they've got good field position. They've got to take advantage of it. League worst average in returning kicks last year. So that seems to have gotten better as they hand to Garner. And he runs into a pile. What's coming up in the second half of your day on Fox? A couple of really good games and interesting games. The Giants against the Eagles. Kurt Warner making the start. T.O.'s debut and Bill Parcells and the Cowboys going up to Minnesota to take on the Vikings, a team that many picked to end up representing the NFC in the Super Bowl. Check your local listings. Second down and nine. That's Tim Brown's first catch at the Tampa Bay Buccaneer down to the 29. You know, so much, guys, has been made of Joe Gibbs' return. He brought his old friends back, Joe Bugle, Jack Burns, Don Bro. But the guy that he added, a younger guy, a really well-respected defensive mind, is Greg Williams. I know he didn't have three very good years up in Buffalo, but this guy appears to have his defense cooked. Very well respected around the league for what he does as a defensive coordinator. And we can already tell he's got these guys playing hard. He's got Tampa Bay offensively very confused and on their heels. Third down and five. Blitz coming. Bowen again. Johnson fires. That's Galloway. He had it and dropped it. And all Galloway can do is hang his head. Sean Taylor was down there on the coverage. And now Galloway gets up gimpy. Well, Joe, and that's what Tampa Bay was looking forward to using. They line him up in the slot. He's going to go to the corner. Brad gets just enough time to get it out there. Actually makes a great throw. Galloway makes a good adjustment on the ball. He's just not able to haul it in. But he's the guy who gives them the big play ability, the big play threat that they've not had here for quite some time. But, boy, the ball hits you right in the hands like that. you got to haul that one in. So while the training and medical staff looks at Joey Galloway, Buccaneer fans thinking about what might have been. Nine thirty tonight on Fox Sports One, the most comprehensive roundup of all the weekend's Premier League action. The Premier League Highlight Show. 
Great goals, controversies, and no doubt, a thousand talking points. Oh, wonderful! He almost tore the net off! Can you believe that? Catch all the action of the Highlight Show tonight at 9.30, Fox Sports 1. Quite incredible! He made a bet, and she's got an agenda. Oh, you are already falling in love with me. I'm gonna make you wish you were dead. How to lose a guy in 10 days on Showtime. It's time to put your game face on, because the new season of NBL tips off live on Fox Sports September 29th. Let's go. How many dudes you know go like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many. Infinity. Not many. Infinity. How many dudes you know got skills go and rock a show like this? Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know anybody. Live games Wednesday and Saturday night, plus for Foxtel and All-Star Digital subscribers, Sports Active on selected games. Raise your arms, let me see you go with up, and I will oh, always oh. represent my crew to set the set the course. Uh, what? How many dudes you know go like this? How many dudes yeah. you know flow like cool. this? Not many, infinity, not many, infinity. How many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock a show like this? New season of NBL on Fox tips off September 29 on your home of hoops, Fox Sports. Motorsport on Fox Sports. We'll put you in pole position. Nobody on the Buccaneers is standing on shakier ground than little 5'8", 170-pound Martin Gramatica. He missed 10 field goal attempts last year. Career worst percentage, and he missed four this preseason. And Joe, you know he's thinking about it right now. Martin Gramatica is one for one. A subdued Gramatica celebration. He is one for one, and the Bucks are on the board here in Washington. There's more NRL footy on Fox Sports. Oh, yeah! Only Fox Sports delivers every game, every week. Well, can you believe that? Tune in to NRL Super Saturday and NRL Sunday as our team follows your team. Get more from the game with Fox Sports uninterrupted action. They are dancing in the stands, and why wouldn't they be? Information and innovation. Okay, listen. On and off the field, we've got Lee Carlos. Fox Sports Active lets you call the shots, and it's available to Foxtel and Ostar Digital subscribers on selected games now. So I'll agree to both choices now. Every Monday night, tally up the winners and find out the reasons why live on NRL Scoreboard. The best review show in the business. And from review to preview, NRL on Fox has the expert tips and big name guests live every Wednesday night. Oh, it's great for the fans. It's the rugby league result you're looking for. NRL on Fox Sports. It's your team. Oh, from Glebe in 1908 to West Tigers in 2000, the history of rugby league clubs is the story of every club that has played in the Sydney Premiership. The great players, the illustrious teams, the larger-than-life characters. The history of rugby league clubs is available at all good bookstores for $49.95. Or you can have a limited edition signed by the Fox Sports legends for $250 by phoning 9975-6799. Thirty-one days of live sport. That's Fox Sports in October. Swimming. The U.S. hosts the world superstars of the pool in the FINA World Short Course Championships. Live from Indianapolis. That's October on Fox Sports. There's Greg Camella for fullback. That's just one of those injuries that once it opens up, it just never closes up. Till the off season, then you end up looking like something from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> they like that, though. They do. They like that. They have a little, a little hickey on your forehead. They like that stuff. Frodo Camella. This is Sellers on the return on an ugly kickoff. And Sellers is out just across the 35-yard line. He says as he sits down awkwardly, waiting to be on camera in front of 61% of the United States of America. What do you think? So far, so good for old uh, Mr. Gibbs and the assistants and Tampa Bay. They're still looking for their first first down. 
I think that's the thing that's uh, most surprising right now is the inability of Tampa Bay in order to move the football. And yeah, they got great position, great field position on that last kickoff return and weren't able to do anything with it. But boy, if they don't get going here pretty quick, it's going to be a blowout. They've just been lucky so far to be in this game. For this to be 10 3 is almost amazing from what we've seen. This is Clinton Portis. Does he have any speed? Penalty flag on the play. As Portis is forced out right in front of the first down marker, but this appears to be coming back. That's what the Buccaneers say. Holding. Defense. Oh. Number 66. Five yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So yet another first down on the ledger for the Redskins who just keep moving the chains. You just can't say enough about Clinton Portis and what he is adding to this offense. I mean, there are plays that just appears you take a look at the hold that it just looked like, okay, that, you know, that might be a yard or two. And all of a sudden he hits the Jets and he's around the corner and picking up 10, 12 yards. And the Hogs like it. Although now they're the dirt bags, right? Uh, right. They're not the Hogs anymore. They're the dirt bags now. And they like that. Portis lately has been in there for a play, out for a couple of plays. This is Liddell Betts, who barely made the team in the preseason. And again, let's go down to Pam Oliver. Head coach Joey Galloway dropped that touchdown pass, and he is now officially out of the lineup. The Bucks say that Galloway has suffered a groin strain. Apparently, that's something that had been bothering him during the training camp. John Bruton had rested him at various points in time, but now it's serious enough. He's got to miss the rest of the game. All right, Pam, so there's a Tampa Bay team that now doesn't have Galloway. They don't have Juravicious. Keenan McCardell is holding out for a new deal. They are awfully thin on the outside. On second down. No pressure on Brunel, and that is so well played by Smith stepping in front of Rasby. And Dwight Smith, he, he really is a heck of a football player for this team. You know, he plays safety, but he's so good in cover that he has spent some time in recent years playing the nickel corner for this team. And so when you match him up against a tight end, I mean, it's not even close. You can put him on the third wide receivers for most teams, and he's lucky he didn't get a better jump on that one and intercept it. Is Joe Bugle that good that he can make this offensive line that much better in the season? It's absolutely amazing the protection Brunel's getting. 340! Hot, hot! Yes. <laughs> I guess so. Third down and 10. Brunel over the middle, and it is juggled and dropped. Incomplete. Incomplete, and Gardner is saying throw the flag to challenge it. Well, he's saying challenge, and from my vantage point, it didn't look like he caught it. It looked like it came out and hit the turf. Here's a better look at it, but he's running a square in. They find the hole. Brunel does a good job of getting it into him, a low ball that only he can catch, but that's incomplete there. It looks like tip of the ball. You got to possess the ball. He can hit the ground, but you got to show possession of the catch unless before it, it does that. Unless it was resting on his arm or his leg. Does it ever hit the ground? It Absolutely. looks like it does there. No challenge there, just a drop pass and essentially a turnover on that play. It cost your team possession. So Tom Tupa will punt for the first time. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, and it's Tim Brown waiting deep now with Galloway out with a groin strain. And Tim Brown has been playing this game too long. And out of field, that ball inside the 10. That's into the end zone, out to the 20. The Buccaneers have it down by seven. Visa, proud sponsor of the... There's nothing quite like the sweet sound of a great drive. He's been doing that all day. There's nothing like holding an ace. Magic. There's nothing like sinking that crucial putt. Boy, what a good looking shot. And there's nothing like winning on the US PGA Tour. And yeah, that's more like it. The Canadian Open. This morning at 5, live and exclusive on Fox Sports 1. The world's leading cricketing nations have their eyes on just one prize. The ICC Champions Trophy. Who will be crowned the finest one-day team? Australia versus United States. Tonight at 7, Fox Sports 2. When it comes to secret agents, they're smooth, they're sophisticated, and then there's English. Completely innocent to the untrained eye, but click it twice. 
Johnny English. Premier Sunday on Showtime. Fox Sports, your complete rugby destination. Fox Sports 2 this Sunday afternoon. Get your fix of MotoGP live from midday. Whoa, here we go again. Someone's gone down. The place has gone crazy. Once again, it's Valentino Rossi. The MotoGP from Japan, Sunday at midday, live on Fox Sports 2. Can Rossi do it again? Did you know that you are watching Fox Sports broadcasting in 720p and Dolby 5.1, the world's finest high-definition standard? Glad you're with us. A 10-3 Redskin lead, and now the Buccaneers get it back. Still looking for their first first down. The offensive leaders for the Buccaneers, only 12 yards through the air. Stumbling in the backfield and happy to get back to the line of scrimmage is Charlie Garner. Buccaneers have Garner as their feature back. They are awaiting the return of Michael Pittman, who's out for the first three games, suspended by the league, violating the conduct policy. And Garner's always been a very good back, but he's had another guy with him. He had Ricky Waters with him in Philadelphia. He had Tyrone Wheatley with him out in Oakland. And he'll be happy to get Pittman back with him with the Bucks. Well, Mike Allstott's got to be that guy to help relieve him until Pittman comes back. Blitz coming. That's tipped. And it's still caught by Dilger, but only for a yard. Washington. On the stop, and Pierce got a hand on it. Let's go out for a game break in JB. Joe, Seattle's Matt Hasselbeck, excellent in clutch situations last year. Here in the red zone, little screen pass to Sean Alexander. He takes it 14 yards to pay dirt. A play, 76 yards. Seattle up 7-0. Seattle beat the Saints in week one last season. Back to Joe Buck. All right, JB, thanks. They are looking at Matt Bowen who came on a blitz on that last play. They've been blitzing him a lot in this first half. Well, and it really does two things. It keeps Charlie Garner in the backfield. You see Garner number 30 picking him up on the left side. And Matt Bowen paid the price for it. And he's been such a big part of this defensive scheme, blitzing on about 30, 35 percent of the plays, it seems like. And if he's out, that'll be a factor. You know, you spent so much time in preseason. I know for Tampa Bay, we talked about it offensively. They didn't have a lot of their players that played during these preseason games, but the veteran guys always want to say, well, we'll turn it on when the regular season starts. And, you know, Derek Deese didn't participate much. Joey Galloway didn't, of course, now he's out. And to a man, they thought they could come in here and get the job done. But right now, we're starting to see that, one, the fact that they didn't play together during preseason has had an impact, at least in this first half. And two, right now, they're just being overwhelmed by this Washington defense, third and nine. Johnson fires and the pass incomplete. That's the rookie Clayton. How about the energy and the spark and the fire on this Washington defense? They are flying all over the place. How about the pathetic play right now by the Buccaneers? Look at the blitz pickup. Both linebackers fire from the outside. And Michael Clayton, the rookie, just has to make this play. This is executed perfectly by everybody on the football team. And a drop. So another punt from Josh Bidwell. Morton waiting for it. Fair catch. Chad takes it in at the 37. That's where the Redskins will take over. They lead this one by seven. All the flair of tennis's richest slam, the U.S. Open. It's also the last chance to secure a Grand Slam title this year. The men's singles final this afternoon at 1.30, Fox Sports 2. The countdown to the election has now begun. And this time, you'll be better equipped than ever to make the big decision. All major policy announcements, breaking news, and bulletin coverage around the clock. 
our own nightly election show and tough weekly analysis. In an election campaign, credibility is everything. For the first time on Sky News, there's a dedicated channel for digital customers with all information at the touch of a button. And you can have your say on the issue of the day. Press the red button to vote. Finally, on the big night, watch the election unfold with Australia's first ever digital multi-screen coverage. It's a revolution in the making. Monitoring the election run-up 24-7. Sky News Election 04. Get informed. Get involved. Tomorrow morning from the Premiership. The action continues with the Addicts up against the Saints live at five. And there is no substitute for class. The Barclays English Premier League live and exclusive on Fox Sports. Pace. It's a true. Power. Anything could happen here. Passion. Oh, isn't it? Oh, what a game. Oh, this is brilliant. It's got it all. The New Zealand NPC. Every week on Fox Sports. Keeping you in the spin of things. Cricket on Fox Sports. Right now, Clinton Portis on the sideline as the Redskins have the ball again. And you watch their offensive leaders scroll by. Brunel is thrown for 45 yards. Portis knocking on the door of a 100-yard I'm sure better debut in a Redskins uniform. Liddell bets in the backfield and he gets it on first down. They say a team can take on the personality of its offensive line. In years past, that was a scary proposition for the Redskins. These days, with the kind of holes they're opening up, that may take them into the postseason. So far, just dominating the line of scrimmage. And the Buccaneers are thinking, here we go again, a team that struggled stopping the run up the middle last year. Joe, you've got to say both sides of the line of scrimmage. They have just been kicking the Bucks' tail. Second down and six. This one is for Coles, and he's overthrown. A lot of bumping going on with Mario Edwards. Free agent addition from the Dallas Cowboys defending. Mario, Mario Edwards, really a key acquisition for this Tampa Bay team. You think back to last year when Brian Kelly went down and they were really in disarray as far as their corner play because they were so thin. And Tampa Bay made it a real priority this offseason to go out and get a guy who could come in and be their third corner. And Mario Edwards is someone who's got a lot of starting, ex starting experience. He was a starter there in Dallas for quite some time. Three for six on third downs today are the Redskins. It's third and six. Rice is coming. Samuels helped out. Brunel gets flattened, and that ball is thrown out of bounds. Ending up on top of Brunel was Ellis Wims. And the Redskins have to be happy Brunel can get up after that. Well, I remember talking with Joe Gibbs, and he said, if our quarterback gets hit, somebody made a mistake. And you see Chad Morton, of course, that's a mismatch. He's out there on Simeon Rice. Brunel gets pressure, but then it's up inside is where he gets it. And, man, he absolutely got pounded. Boy, give the Bucks a little credit for hanging in there, especially defensively. They've got nothing out of their offense. At least their defense is out there fighting. Now it's Bill Schrader waiting for the punt. And this one is out of bounds off the foot of Tom Tupa. Well done by Tupa. They mark it at the 18. We look back and look at the first time around for Joe Gibbs. He started 0-5. It was in his early 40s, and he went 36-6 and for his next 42 games. And when Bobby Beathard plucked him off the staff of Don Coriel, San Diego Chargers, he handed this Redskins team to Joe Gibbs, and both Beathard and Gibbs were called into the office. Jack Kent Cook said, hey, what's going on here? And Gibbs at one point turned to Beathard and said, You've made a mistake and you want to get rid of me, get rid of me. Well, what he said was, he says, I'm going to be the first guy in NFL history who gets fired before he ever wins a game. <laughs> <laughs> They're certainly glad they kept him, aren't they? Four Super Bowls later, three Super Bowl victories later.
An 11 year layoff and now he's back. That's Bill Schrader and that's six yards. Yeah, and I like what the Bucks did there. They have finally opened this thing up a little bit. They're spreading the field. In the first quarter, John Gruden was so concerned about protection, he was all bunched together and they really didn't get into their offense, I didn't think. Now they come out on first down, they spread it out a little bit, find some of those little holes, and that's what Brad Johnson does best. Second down and four. Stop. Got maybe a half yard. Cornelius Griffin on the stop. How would you like to be a foot a fullback in the National Football League? Greg Camella has got the job of blocking Lamar Arrington and watch the collision that they have right there at impact. Does a good job of holding his ground. Lavar is not the guy who gets in and makes the play, but tough way to make a living in this league. You know firsthand about Lamar Arrington, don't you? How he ended my career. Third and three. Play action dropped off to Allstott. And Mike Allstott has just picked up the first first down for the Buccaneers. How tired of this video are you, Troy Aikman? <laughs> you know, I enjoy it when they show it because I don't remember it when it happened, you know? I literally you thought, wait, 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 here's the best part, you, here's the best part. You right enjoy here. when they show Watch that? Watch this. This guy's rubbing you on the head. You look up at him like, I am going to take your head off. I thought a trainer had to run down the sideline and grab my head and put it back on my shoulders <laughs> after that hit. I have never been hit so hard in all my life. Whoa. On first down, Arrington was coming again, and there's Clayton. And a guy who may go down, at least in the 28-year history of the Bucks, is the best wide receiver they've drafted. Makes the catch and gets nine. You know, right now they're they're almost daring the Redskins to come after them a little bit. Now they're saying, okay, why don't you guys? We'll just spread the field. They want to blitz. We're going to take those five-step drops, throw it in there quickly, and try and slow down this blitz package a little bit of Greg Williams. And right now it's working. Second and one. Big back set with Kamala blocking for Allstock, and he lost yardage. Joe Salavea sliced through to make the play. Look at this Redskins defense and what they've done so far. 19 plays, they've blitzed nine times. It's more guys of what they did during the preseason. You know, they're bringing people from all over the place, which is really characteristic of Greg Williams and what he likes to do. He's done it everywhere that he's been. His influences over the years of coaching were from Buddy Ryan and Jeff Fisher. That's all you need to know and knowing that as a quarterback, you're going to take a lot of hits. They're going to bring a lot of people, and they've done a great job here today, pressure in Tampa Bay. Timeout taken by the Bucks. There's nothing quite like the sweet sound of a great drive. He's been doing that all day. There's nothing like holding an ace. Magic. There's nothing like sinking that crucial putt. In the hole. Boy, what a good looking shot. And there's nothing like winning on the US PGA Tour. And yeah, that's more like it. The Canadian Open. This morning at 5, live and exclusive on Fox Sports 1. Buccaneers wanted to talk about a third and two. It's a long two. Johnson off his back foot. He's been pressured all day, and Brown is looking for a flag. He won't get it. who's coming back off a severe knee injury was defending for Washington. Yeah, he's got a knee injury, and what you're going to see is Tim Brown. He's going to act like he's running across the field, but Walt Harris is not even threatened by him. He has, he has, he's not threatened because of the speed or lack of by Tim Brown. That's why he was able to get the jump on it, and that's why the ball fell incomplete. Great start for this Redskins defense. Buccaneers only have points because of that great kick return by Murphy. Morton from inside the 20. Out to the 25, and that's it. And a penalty flag comes down on the play. 
Horton was swallowed up by about four Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we'll get the call and then we'll talk baseball. During the return, illegal use of hands to the face. Receiving team, number 23, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, this should be a fun weekend coming up of Fox Saturday Baseball because it highlights the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. They'll turn that rivalry up one more notch as they fight for the American League's Eastern Division. That's in New York. The Diamondbacks take on the Cardinals, Rangers, Angels. Two teams that are still in a couple of different races. That's all this coming up weekend. Begins at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox. And the Yankees have been thoroughly threatened and challenged by the red hot Boston Red Sox. Yes, they have. That started, didn't they have about a 10 game home yeah. stand where they uh, won 9 out of 10, something like that? That's how they got hot. And the lead was Let's double go, digits go. for the Yankees and the Red Sox, I think, my opinion, because the wild card was there. They remained interested. They added at the trading deadline as opposed to getting rid of some of their potential free agents. They're filled with them this year. Lo and behold, here they are challenging for the division. Clint Portis in the backfield, and he gets it from Brunel. A nice gain out to just beyond the 15-yard line. Well, it's a good gain by Clinton Portis, and also when you consider the fact that right now, Tampa Bay is committed to trying to get an eighth guy up in the box to help in run support. They've not been able to slow this running game down for Washington. They're doing everything they can short of bringing an extra guy and so far it has not worked for him. Portis has played in 30 career games 19 times he's gone over 100 yards he's just done it. Also his seventh straight 100 yard game. And he will lose yardage there. Maybe a half yard Ian Gold was up to make the stop. Well now you're seeing what the Buccaneers defensively have to get done and that is to get some run through. There are holes as the Redskins offense begins to slowly develop and move and pull tackles and pull people. There is opportunity to run through. Right now there are eight guys up, sometimes nine guys up in the box. And instead of waiting and reacting to this offense, you have to attack it. You have to get up the field and the Bucs haven't been able to do that so far. Third down and five. Brunel outside the pocket flips it for Gardner and that's where Brunel was so good all those years in Jacksonville making plays outside the pocket and that's a completion of 27 yards and I'll tell you what Rod Gardner is just having a heck of a ball game here today and he's been overshadowed last year by Lavernius Coles but you watch him he just keeps playing Mario Edwards loses him because of the cover two coverage doesn't realize that Gardner gets in behind him but Mark Brunel always looking down the field for the open guy and it's just that's just a nice job by quarterback and wide receiver playing football. It's also a nice job of getting your right hamstring loose before the game. <laughs> he popped right up. On first down, another throw from Brunel. He drops it off for Portis. And that's another weapon that Portis brings is a good receiver out of the backfield. He's, he is a good wide or a good receiver out of the backfield. Joe, he's not in the not in the terms of like a Marshall Falk or an Edger and James. The things that he does are more of the swing routes, the flat routes, some of the checkdowns. But as we see Tampa Bay start bringing that eighth guy up in the box and start committing to trying to slow down that running game, we saw play action there. Mark Brunel trying to take a shot here within the next few plays. I would expect Washington to take a shot down the field. it off to Portis. Clint Portis gets up to the 48, gain of three. It's really fun to keep your eye on the H-back for the Washington Redskins. More often than not, he will lead you to the ball. Watch him come through and leave this little delay coming back, the counter the other way. That is why the Washington Redskins are winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Very impressive. They love that H back here in Washington. I almost get the impression it's like the center fielder for the New York Yankees. This thing, they need a center fielder. They needed somebody to fall on top of that, and it's Chad Morton to keep the ball for Washington. See Seattle jump out to a 14 to nothing lead at New Orleans, and Arizona has now caught St. Louis. We are kind of ripping through this first half coming up on the two minute warning. 
Let's take a look at that last. Well, it, didn't, it didn't look like it got all the way up, as you can tell. I don't even think it got into Mark Brunel's hands at all. Of course, the balls are slick. A lot of it's a lot of humidity. It's a warm day down there on the field, and Lenny Friedman might have just slung that one right between the legs of Mark Brunel. He never even got his hands on it. How, how lucky are the Redskins, though, that it didn't hit Mark Brunel? That would have bounced around. They actually got a chance to recover. Punt coming up from the Redskins. Uh, last chance for the Bucks here in this first half at the two-minute warning. from 7.30 every Monday night. Following Fox Sports News, an hour of topical discussion from the Backpage team. That wasn't the only off-field draft. No, I've always had problems with politics and sports. At 8.30, NRL scoreboard takes the ball and runs with it. Inside winners and scores. Oh, no. to leverage. You're kidding. At 9.30, it's the Premier League Highlight Show, your one-stop roundup from all the weekend's action. Oh, wonderful! Monday night has what you need on Fox Sports 1. What if today was not your day? Could I maybe get that headset, please? Is there a problem here, sir? About what? There's not a problem. Calm down. I'm calm! This court hereby orders you to undergo 20 hours of anger management therapy. What if your future was in his hands? Where should we put my stuff? What stuff? Jack Nicholson, Adam Sandler. I'm in the way. I like to sleep in the mood. Anger management. Healing September 26 on Showtime. Sad day for John Jansen and for the Washington Redskins when they lost Jansen. He's on IR, ruptured Achilles. That was suffered in the first of five preseason games, a Hall of Fame game in camp. You know what's really amazing is that you could take your best offensive lineman out of this lineup and to put on this kind of a show up front for the Washington Redskins. That's Mike Barrow, who's inactive today. He's got tendonitis in his knee. Getting better. This is Schrader. Dangerous catch of the punt with Thrash right in his face. 41 yard punt and a one yard return. Coming up on the Visa halftime report, JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy will have scores and highlights around the league on this opening kickoff weekend. Fox Sports ticker has up to the second scores and stats. This one is 10 3 Washington, a minute 52 remaining. And the Buccaneers have it with two timeouts left. Four-man rush and the pass complete to Clayton. Falls forward up to the 30, a gain of eight. The offensive summary for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is not good. Four punts, three three and outs. One field goal, which came thanks to a great kickoff return by Frank Murphy. That's it. They haven't moved the ball at all. That's Clayton. Nice catch. High throw, and Clayton lost it. The Redskins end up with a ball, but... I've got to say, I thought he was down just watching it from here. So far, the officials have not made any call as they get together and talk about it. Well, I think that's one of the things you worry about when you got a young player in there playing. First down. The call on the field is no fumble. Remember, it would be a booth review. As we're under two minutes. Amazing, they're not going to even look at that. As Johnson flips it out of bounds. I agree, Joe. That's uh, one of the weaknesses of this system is that you're so dependent on the person sitting up and watching the, the play and, and in my estimation there's no way that play should not have been reviewed based on what we saw I mean it is awfully close one way or another Did that ball come out or did the knee hit first I, I just think instant replay has to kick in at that point if you're going to have it 
That's Sean Taylor who knocked it out. A couple of rookies going at it. It was at least close. Minute seven remaining, second and ten. And they flip it forward. That's a new running back who's wrapped up Jamel White after a gain of only two. You see Antonio Pierce get off that little pile, and they really love what he has done filling in for Mike Barrow. He can play all three linebacker positions. They do miss him, though, on special teams when he makes these starts. Pass is caught. It depends on the spot as to whether it's a first down or not. That's Tim Brown. And the whistles stop the clock as we are going to have a measurement. Anytime you play against Brad Johnson, you know you have to protect the middle of the field underneath. Watch all the guys playing about five yards deep here. This is exactly how I would play the Buccaneers. I would force Brad Johnson and the Bucs to beat me down the field. You can just see ordinarily in the NFL, you don't see that amount of underneath coverage but that's what they're going to try and take away from Brad Johnson there today. Well and it certainly changed the approach for Washington once Joey Galloway goes out of the game now you lose the deep threat once again Michael Clayton really being the only guy and I'm a little surprised right here that they're not going for it. I thought they got a drive going you know of course there's 32 seconds left in the game but at some point you've got to be a little bit aggressive and try to get something going. I realize they're only down seven points right now but well, they don't have very far to go to pick up that first down. It'd be a great boost for this team if they were able to come off of this drive with points prior to the end of the half. I totally agree, and I think maybe John Gruden's just thinking we're lucky just to be down seven, but I'm going for it right there. Less than a yard shy of a first down, they punt. Chad Morton doesn't want to make any mistakes. Hang time of 5-3, and with 24 seconds remaining, and even with three timeouts, Washington Redskins will take over and I'd be shocked if they try to do anything down the field you look at sacks allowed under Joe Gibbs 82 87 91 they were first last year 24th and poor Patrick Ramsey got pounded week after week and today after having a very good preseason allowing only three sacks in five games they haven't allowed any against Tampa Bay. Well, and that was the thing that was impressive in preseason, as you mentioned. They gave up three in five games, led the league, and that's with a bunch of backups. Well, usually it's a jailbreak on a quarterback when you get into the second half of those preseason games, and they've done a good job in preseason. They've done a good job here against a team that's notorious for rushing the passer. Gardner wanted one more catch before the end of the half. As he stepped in front of Terry McCauley, and this was... This was a game that on the field was absolutely dominated by the Washington Redskins for two quarters and on the scoreboard it's a one score game. Well and, and that's right and the one thing about it is is that you know that Washington as much as they dominated that first half if you allow a team to stay in a game in this league eventually that team's going to get on a momentum swing and they've got a chance to pull it out so. This game's a long way from being over, but Tampa Bay's going to have to clearly show something more on offense from what they've shown the first 30 minutes of this game. And unless the Washington Redskins end up being the 85 Bears, that was just one horrible half of offense for Tampa Bay. I know they lose Galloway, but that was really a bit embarrassing for the Bucs. So there's John Gruden, and uh, really the pressure's on a guy like Gruden. No more Rich McKay. He's now in Atlanta. Gruden has Bruce Allen with him. And now people say, well, he's starting to get, quote unquote, his guys around him. And so far, with the different mixing and matching that went on over the offseason and then the kind of preseason they went through, uh, the jury is very much out on what this Bucks team is all about. Well, I would agree, Joe. There's pressure on John Gruden to go out and perform well. But at the same time, there's, there's, there's pressure on everybody in this league. And, you know, nobody's immune to that, including us. Yeah, well done. <laughs> hey. 30 minutes gone. 10-3 at the Water. It's time to put your game face on because the new season of NBL tips off live on Fox Sports September 29th. Let's go. How many dudes you know go like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many. Remix. Many. Not many. Infinity. How many dudes you know got skills going? Rock a show like this. 
I don't know anybody. Live games Wednesday and Saturday night. Plus for Foxtel and All-Star Digital subscribers, Sports Active on selected games. Raise your arms. Let me see you throw it up. And I will I'll always go. represent my crew to set the set the course. How many dudes you know go like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many. Infinity, not many, infinity. How many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock a show like this? New season of NBL on Fox tips off September 29 on your home of hoops, Fox Sports. Let's get into it! International One Day and Test Cricket Plus, the Australian NBL. Tennis and Super 12s will be coming soon. So if you want to get interactive, vote and get more from your new sport or weather, man, just press your red button. Touch me. I rock. There's more NRL footy on Fox Sports. Oh, yeah. Only Fox Sports delivers every game, every week. Well, can you believe that? Tune in to NRL Super Saturday and NRL Sunday as our team follows your team. Get more from the game with Fox Sports uninterrupted action. They are dancing in the stands and why wouldn't they be? Information and innovation. Okay, listen. On and off the field, we've got lead colours. Fox Sports Active lets you call the shots and it's available to Foxtel and Ostar Digital subscribers on selected games now. So I'll agree to both choices now. Every Monday night, tally up the winners and find out the reasons why live on NRL Scoreboard. The best review show in the business. And from review to preview, NRL on Fox has the expert tips and big name guests live every Wednesday night. Oh, it's great for the fans. It's the rugby league result you're looking for. NRL on Fox Sports. It's your team. Oh, Fox Sports, your complete rugby destination. The Visa Halftime Report is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. And welcome to the Visa Halftime. Those of you watching Tampa Bay at Washington, Detroit and Chicago, let's get you caught up on the action here at the halftime mark. Joe Gibbs back in D.C. Good to see you back, Joe. How's it going? Going really good, Terry. I'm going to give it to Clinton Portis. Remember him? 64 yards later. Touchdown off and running the skin. 7 out the, Did I not tell you so, boys? Then Johnson back to pass. Hit by bow and ball pops loose Cornell Griffin covered the covers for that recovered for the scans led to a John Hall field goal 10 to 3 scans over Tampa Bay all right Rex Grossman get him going hooks up to David Terrell for a 27 yard gain finally brought down no score at this point then out of the vacant eye Thomas Jones takes the pitch in from two yards out seven or nothing Bears over the line. If it's vacant, is it still an eye? It's still an eye. All a right. vacant eye. I didn't have anything else to say, so I just added that. How about this? This rookie out of out of Texas Williams, 100, one, uh, one handed yard, one handed grab. We know what you're trying to say. Five yard cut. There you are, seven to three. Spin it up, my boy. Them. Impressive. It's first game. That's All right. right, Seattle, New Orleans, Hasselback. Looks, hooks up with Jeremy Stevens, but picked off by Ambrose. No score at this point. And then Sean Alexander takes this 14-yard pass in touchdown. 7-0 Seattle. Alexander again from six yards out. 14-0 Seattle. And then finally, Aaron Brooks in the Saints. Get it done. Ernie Conwell back with the end zone. Six-yard touchdown reception. 14-7 Seahawks over the Saints. St. Louis, Arizona, Marshall Falk. 11,237 yards rushing break moves into 13th place all-time rushing his backup though as you see Steven Jackson down fumbles the football Wilson recovers for the cards and then another turnover this time Bulger intercepted by Quentin Harris three tur turnovers in the first quarter by the Rams your score is six to three St. Louis Bettis Arizona. with the two touchdowns but do sale he set the stage there Cleveland three nothing over Baltimore Deion Sanders four snaps nothing of significance there Ray Lewis though six tackles in one sack Chad Pennington, 100 yards, two touches in the first quarter. Jets up 14-0. Jaguars will win this on the road last year, and they are trailing. And the Texans have won both of their preseason openers, uh, make their previous season openers, and they're up 13-10. In Washington, on the ground, Clinton Portis, Jimmy Johnson, 105 yards rushing.
JB, why are we surprised? You know, with the salary cap and with with parity and the level playing field for everybody, owners can make a difference in one way. Their coach. And, you know, 200 yards of offense, great pass protection. You know, compared to the circus they had a year ago, Joe Gibbs is getting it done. Well, Clinton Portis gives that something in particular to Joe Gibbs that that offense had never had on first down. He had a guy by the name of Joe Washington some years ago who was his second down back. Clinton Portis gives them so much versatility, the cutbacks, the wide run plays. And Chris Collinsworth asks the question, are they that much better? Is Joe Bugle that much better in protection? It's remarkable how much just an emphasis on protection in contrast to what they had last year when that Florida pass protection plan. So <laughs> it's still just 10 to 3, Washington. Oh, yeah, it's still over. a game. Oh, the way you guys are talking, it's the first two rounds. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to slide the Lombardi rounds. trophy right <laughs> down there. Those first two rounds were like Hagler Hearns rounds. Get TV, out of here. You have to be impressed. I hey, impressed, here's the guy you got that was gushy. blasting the geriatric coaching staff of the Redskins. Oh, so, no, of no, course, Jamie, he's got to support that. Absolutely. No, no, no. They're experienced. There you go, Jimmy. I think what he said was make sure the staff knows which Side the field. The oxygen. <laughs> Christmas. Hey, by the way, with three, by people. the way, with Detroit now, Dre Bly out with a knee injury so far in the first half. Charles Rogers injured the same shoulder that was plaguing him last year. Now the second half of your game, Bunch including the geriatric coaches of the skins, coming up next. <laughs> Does anybody not have any? <laughs> One. That was hit straight and hard by Saurabh Ganguly. How do we start? We start with you telling me what I'm doing here. Well, I have a hard story for you to tell, Miss Bloom. One reporter. No one who looks through that glass sees a person. They see a crime. I'm not David Gale. I'm a murderer, four days shy of his execution. Has three days to unravel a mystery. Murder's way too clumsy. This guy is a major intellectual, top of his Harvard class. It doesn't make sense. Two days to discover the truth. Somewhere out there is a record of exactly what happened that afternoon. And one day... They wanted me to die, knowing that the key to my freedom is out there somewhere. To change a man's fate. Someone's framing you. Oh, it's more than that. Rid them off. You know I'm innocent. No, I don't. Miss Bloom, I used to be the state's leading death penalty abolitionist, and now I'm on death row. Doesn't that strike you as a little odd? Call everyone! The governor, the warden, New York's a death Supreme Court death book. Kevin Spacey, Kate Winslet, and Laura Linney star in a powerful film by acclaimed director Alan Parker. I'm running out of time. The Life of David Gale, coming soon to Showtime. Keeping you in the spin of things. Cricket on Fox Sports. The Buccaneers took some shots in the first half, but they're still standing, only down by seven. The biggest play of the day, the 64-yard touchdown scamper by Clinton Portis. His first carry as a Redskin. They love him. He's up over 100 yards for the day, but it's only a seven-point game, as Terry said, at the half. Second half is coming up next. There's more NRL footy on Fox Sports. Oh, yeah! Only Fox Sports delivers every game, every week. What can you believe this? Tune in to NRL Super Saturday and NRL Sunday as our team follows your team. Get more from the game with Fox Sports uninterrupted action. They are dancing in the stands and why wouldn't they be? Information and innovation. Okay, listen. On and off the field, we've got lead colors. Fox Sports Active lets you call the shots, and it's available to Foxtel and Ostar Digital subscribers on selected games now. So we get both choices now. Every Monday night, tally up the winners and find out the reasons why live on NRL Scoreboard. The best review show in the business. And from review to preview, NRL on Fox has the expert tips and big name guests live every Wednesday night. Oh, it's great for the fans. It's the rugby league result you're looking for. NRL on Fox Sports. It's your team. Oh, Predicting the weather may seem impossible. Not anymore. The Weather Channel has you covered. Get instant access to your current weather and forecasts. 
Weather Direct gives you your complete local picture in 90 seconds, every five minutes. And when you need expert information, we deliver. The Weather Channel. Live by it. Fox Sports 2 this Sunday afternoon. Get your fix of MotoGP live from midday. Whoa, here we go again. Someone's got that. The place has gone crazy. Once again, it's Valentino Rossi. The MotoGP from Japan, Sunday at midday, live on Fox Sports 2. Can Rossi do it again? When it comes to secret agents, they're smooth, they're sophisticated, and then there's English. Completely innocent to the untrained eye, but click it twice. Johnny English, premiere Sunday on Showtime. Cricket fans, imagine sitting in the comfort of your armchair and having the power of the director's seat. You're in control, ball by ball, wicket by wicket. It's sports active cricket. He's got him. Highlights, scores, statistics, all with the push of the red button on your remote control. And replays at your fingertips, from a classic catch to a masterful stroke. Sports active cricket. Stay on top of the game. It'll have your mates seeing red. The Redskins will get the ball here at the start of the second half after the first half a dominated play you look at the numbers including time of possession rushing yards that good offensive line for the Redskins opening up holes for Clinton Portis who has 105 on the afternoon How about on the other side eight and we look at our fantasy update for the latest in fantasy stats log on to foxsports.com which is the new Red Hot Sports website on MSN. If you haven't checked it out in a while, do so. Garner only nine yards in his Buccaneer debut. This is Morton from about the goal line. Morton testing this sideline and scooting out of bounds with a good return of 28 yards. Let's go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Hi, Joe. I asked John Gruden at halftime, how are you going to get some offense in this game? He says, all we can do is keep trying. He says, guys have got to step up. He credited Washington for being a very good football team, but he says they're going to bring a lot of pressure as they have all this game. He says, we have got to do a better job of responding to it. Joe Gibbs, meantime, declined to comment at halftime. Thank you. <laughs> It's about like our production meeting with him, wasn't it? Well, I, I don't think there's any doubt. And people around the Redskins will tell you that Joe Gibbs has gone from being wide open and talking and having fun with everybody to really quieting down this last week before the season opener. No doubt the nerves are getting to him. And getting to Clinton Portis is Ian Gold, Chartrick Darby up front with good pressure and a loss of five. Good start for the Tampa Bay defensive front. Yeah, I really think, Joe, that this is a this is a really big defensive series for this Tampa Bay defense. And coming out here to start the second half, they've got to be able to shut Washington down and really set the tempo and get something going for their team. And they cannot afford Washington to take a drive down the field. And that was a good start there on first down. Three forty. Second down and 15, Brunel fires and it's caught. Caught up at the 34-yard line, a gain of 10. Lavernius Coles on the reception. Well, we've been talking about it all day, but anytime you start with Chris Samuels up front going against Simeon Rice, and I think that you get a little chip there on the outside by Clinton Portis, but Simeon Rice, who was such a huge factor last season, with uh, working against Steve Spurrier's schemes where he likes to get four and five receivers out. But this time around, really no factor in the ball game whatsoever. 38 and a half sacks in his last 39 games for Simeon Rice. Third down and three. And hit as he throws it. That's up for grabs. Pass is incomplete, and there was pressure and a hit by Ellis Wims. That's the second time that Wims has flattened Mark Brunel. Well, Mark Brunel has not gotten hit much today. The protection, protection overall has been very good, but when he has gotten hit, and these are the shots that he's taken, and, you know, it's one thing to get hit. It's one thing to go to the ground, but when you get hit like that, it doesn't matter if you're not getting hit the rest of the time during the day. Those hits, those are big-time hits, and they can fill them. 
Need to get Ellis Wims on the field. He's playing with the emotion. The rest of these guys laugh. Schrager with a nice grab on that punt and fights his way up to the 18-yard line. That's where the Buccaneers will start with it as they trail by seven here in the third quarter. There's nothing quite like the sweet sound of a great drive. He's been doing that all day. There's nothing like holding an ace. Magic. There's nothing like sinking that crucial putt. Oh, boy, what a good-looking shot. And there's nothing like winning on the US PGA Tour. And yeah, that's more like it. The Canadian Open. This morning at 5, live and exclusive on Fox Sports 1. Join me weekdays at 4 for everything from cooking to crafts and a whole lot more. It only happens on Martha Stewart Living and only on the How To Channel. It's a hot topic of debate. Do they have the right to do this? When seasoned experts go head to head. That wasn't the only off field drama. And cover all angles of arguments. Uh, oh no, I've always had problems with politics and sport. Because there's a lot more to sport than what happens on the field. Yeah, my marriage has ruined my golf career too. <laughs> when you want to read between the lines and get the facts straight. They realise they do have to toughen up. Click to the back page. Tonight, 7.30, Fox Sports 1. Cricket fans, imagine sitting in the comfort of your armchair and having the power of the director's seat. You're in control. Ball by ball. Wicket by wicket. It's sports active cricket. He's got him. Highlights, scores, statistics, all with the push of the red button on your remote control. And replays at your fingertips. From a classic catch to a masterful stroke. Sports active cricket. Stay on top of the game. It'll have your mates seeing red. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Tell you what kind of a first half it was for the Buccaneers. There are two bright spots. Martin Gramatica hitting a 47-yarder. A long kick return by Frank Murphy, and that's really it. The trail by only seven. Johnson has time and fires over the middle penalty flag on the play as the pass is complete to Dilger. It's good enough for a first down and this penalty is against Washington. Yeah flags coming in out of the secondary illegal contact. Obviously we said many times the point of emphasis this year in fact Schrader he had his jersey ripped clean off his shoulder pads. Easy call for the officials. Holy. Defense, number 21, penalties decline, first down. Great. Great. Smooth. Great job of protection that time by the Buccaneers. And I really think that Brad Johnson at some point has to work the ball down the field a little bit. The only time they did, Joey Galloway dropped the touchdown pass, but they've been playing so tight to the vest, they need to stretch this defense a little bit. On first down, Johnson fires and he hits his rookie plate, who's out to the 40. The big story coming into this day is Joe Gibbs coming back to the saddle. Right now, riding a winner, but it's only a seven point lead with. 12 and a half to go in the third quarter. You think Joe Gibbs is listening to that song on his iPod coming down <laughs> on the bus? No Toss to Garner, who has done nothing in this game, and that continues. First, you got to tell him what an iPod <laughs> is. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aerosmith is not on the hit list. Matt Bowen evidently is back. Garner knows that now, and no gain on that play. You know, I know one of the things that in talking with Brad Johnson yesterday he said that we do so many shifts and so many motions that typically what defenses will then do is they'll they'll check into a cover two shell because they don't want to then be getting beat deep because they're confused. That's not happened with Washington. This offense has not confused them at all. Bowen coming on another blitz and the pass is caught by Dilger, but he is brought down immediately by Washington. And Marcus Washington. They are so excited to have this guy 
He is a product of Peyton Manning signing that huge contract. And Marcus Washington, you see the pressure on the outside by Matt Bowen, though, is athletic enough to stay with anybody. I mean, backs coming out of the backfield, tight ends coming out in the flat. And he is essentially the LeVar Arrington on the other side that this Redskins defense never had. Third down and ten. Three-man rush. Johnson is flush, and that's all stopped. Trying to rumble for a first down, and he has it. That quiets this big crowd of 91,000-plus. Really a veteran move here by Brad Johnson, sensing the pressure, and they do. They come with a three-man rush, and they shouldn't be able to get pressure like that, but they are here. But Brad knows where his players are, is able to get the ball to Mike Allstott, and that's a big first down, keeping a ball, keeping the drive alive, and then hopefully being able to continue with it to come away with some points and stay close in this game. Bill Daniels, who thought he had a sack, ended up injuring himself on the play. Johnson. Well, his feet bouncing around. Drops it shy of Clayton. Well, the fans wanted an intentional grounding call and very easily could have gotten it. Clayton was the only one in the area, but clearly Brad just unloading the football to keep from getting the sack. Would it be uh, fair to say that Brad Johnson does not look comfortable stepping back there behind this offensive line so what? far? Yeah, and I'll tell you why, Joe. Every time he comes up to the line of scrimmage, there's different people that are coming after him. They've got linebackers. they got three-man rushes. Matt Bowen's been putting pressure off the edge, and that's the thing that's been surprising to me. This is a defense that's based on linebacker play, but yet Matt Bowen's been the guy applying all the pressure. Penalty flag on the play. The play clock is at zero. Part of the snap. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. And Troy, we saw so much of this Washington Redskins team a season ago, and they were horrible up front on the defensive side. But now you add Cornelius Griffin, who came over as a free agent from the New York Giants, Philip Daniels from the Bears, Joe Salavea. This is a much improved group up front. They are winning the battle up there, and that's something we did not see at all a season ago. I think Jimmy Johnson said it best. I think it goes back to coaching. Second down and 15. Johnson over the middle of the field. The pass is caught. That's Schrader, and that's a first down at the 35. That's one of the few times that Brad Johnson's been able to actually step up in the pocket without getting hit in the head. And that's why he's able to get clear lines and clean vision down the field play action holds people just enough he's able to step up and make the completion but that's a real that's something that Brad Johnson really needs I mean he's not someone who's extremely mobile he doesn't do real well when he's got pressure in his face most quarterbacks don't but if you give him time to throw he's going to pick you apart already three first downs in this drive to the entire first half for the Buccaneers Garner Something he does so well, catching the ball out of the backfield, gets five. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more of Charlie Garner so far, aren't you, Troy, that this guy is such a receiving threat going down the field. And the one thing that Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator for the Redskins, was truly concerned about with this football team was Charlie Garner coming out of the backfield. He's such a feisty guy. If you get him involved in the offense early, he can really begin to dominate a game. And I would just would look for him a little bit more as this game goes along. Pretty obvious John Gruden making some big halftime adjustments coming out here and getting this offense on track. Play clock is down to four. They get it away, and it's Garner for nothing. Antonio Pierce on the stop. And Joe, I'll tell you, you saw Brad as soon as he started trying to change the play and audible, the, the, the decibel level of this crowd went up tremendously. One thing about this crowd here in Washington, they know football. They know when offenses are trying to change plays. And they do a great job of creating a home field advantage. Of course, they added 5,000 seats here today. 91,000 plus here watching this game. Third down and five. Oh, boy. The crowd is becoming a factor now. Off hats. Number 70. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's Derek Deese. LeVar Arrington, for the past couple of weeks, has been pleading through the newspapers 
and on television shows with the fans of the Redskins to come here, make noise, and give that definite advantage, that 12th man that the Redskins, because they've been so poor over the past handful of years, have lacked. Well, you got to give them a reason to cheer. I mean, they haven't had a reason to cheer for several years, and they're giving them a reason, and they're responding to it now. Bucks need at least five yards for a field goal. Another blitz. Johnson dumps it off incomplete. Garner couldn't hang on, and there was nothing there anyway. Pierce was right on his back. Well, you knew you were going to get pressure anytime you're in a key situation. Greg Williams is going to come after you. A zone blitz that time. They're dropping a few guys back out. No, actually, a man blitz. Good you know, job by the linebackers and Sean Taylor getting out there to make a play. Well, and it's one thing to get blitz as a quarterback. I mean, you know you're going to get hit. You know there's going to be pressure, and you know you got to get the ball out. The frustrating part of it becomes when you're getting pressure, and there's still nowhere to throw the football, and that's what's happening with Brad. They're getting pressure, but they're still covering up his receivers. The punt from Bidwell is not even close to being shy of the end zone. So the Redskins will get it at their own 20, and they continue to lead by seven. The world's leading cricketing nations have their eyes on just one prize, the ICC Champions Trophy. Who will be crowned the finest one-day team? Australia versus United States, tonight at 7, Fox Sports 2. Meet the stars behind the game with Tui's new snapshots. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's a, a great sport to be involved in and, and uh, you come across all sorts of people, which is the best part. If he wants to, absolutely. Uh, everything but the injury bit. Uh, I think it'll be impossible. Um, I think you'll be playing in the front row, not in the centres. I'd be happy for my children to do whatever it was that took their fancy. Uh, yes, I think I'm pretty proud of what I've achieved and what kind of person I've, been, I've grown up to be. I would, but I'm hoping he goes down the golfing route. Yeah, um, and you know, if he grew up to be a cricketer, it wouldn't be such a bad thing, but I'll, I think I'll let him make his own mind up about that. I don't think I'm going to be able to stop him. He's pretty keen. It's the people who make the sport on Tui's new snapshots. Tui's new. What mates do? Fox Sports 1 wraps up the weekend in a great lineup from 7.30 every Monday night. Following Fox Sports News, an hour of topical discussion from the back page team. That wasn't the only off-field draft. Now, I've always had problems with politics and sport. At 8.30, NRL scoreboard takes the ball and runs with it. Inside winners and scores. Oh, we don't need no. two referees. You're kidding me. At 9.30, it's the Premier League Highlight Show, your one-stop roundup from all the weekend's action. Oh, wonderful! Monday night has what you need on Fox Sports 1. When Joe Gibbs coached the Redskins, they had a definite home field advantage at RFK, and they're trying to bring that here to this new stadium in front of this enormous crowd, and this place will continue to fill weekend after weekend when the Skins are here. This Skins team continues to win. See what they've done since Gibbs left, under 500 at home. And I'll tell you, Joe, as great as this has been here today, it's still not like it was at RFK. That place could rock. And it's short, too. No word as to whether Joe Gibbs showed up at RFK earlier today and then wondered why nobody else was there. <laughs> Brunel loses the snap again, and maybe you could call that a missed opportunity. A missed opportunity for the Buccaneers to fall on top and get good field position. There have been quite a few missed opportunities all day. Whether it's the 50-yard field goal try that was pushed wide to the right, that's the reaction from John Hall. This play that we thought should have been reviewed, they didn't review it. The Redskins had to settle for three points. A snap that got away late in the first half that Morton was able to fall on top of. Here's a toss to Portis running right. And he is upended, and there seems to be a little more sense of urgency from this Tampa Bay defense. I, I totally agree, Joe. I'm seeing a lot more juice coming out of the locker room here at halftime for the Buccaneers defensively. And should they be able to come up with a play right here and get the ball back for their offense, I think that John Gruden at halftime found a couple of things, one of those being keeping a tight end to help with the protection a little bit. But if they can get the ball back right here, this momentum may turn now. Hey, Brooke, on third down, Brunel has to step up, has all day, and now airs it out. 
The pass incomplete, and there are no penalty flags with Lavernius Coles, the intended receiver. <laughs> and Joe, I don't know how there's not a flag there. I mean, all offseason and preseason, we've talked about point of emphasis. If there's contact after five yards, you be the judge. Is there contact after five yards? I certainly think that there is, but they don't make, they don't get the call. Lavernius Coles going down the field, and Shelton Quarles getting a hand on him there just before the ball arrives. Schrader's waiting for the punt. It's a good one from Tupa. <laughs> about Matt Bowen, and now a penalty flight comes in. There may have been a face mask at the end of that, but Matt Bowen has been everywhere. May have been. He about ripped his head off. I think that's the 15 variety right there, too. So right now, the Buccaneers, no, nope, he had the uh, shoulder yeah. pad. Let me say again, may have been yeah. a face mask. You have eagle eyes once again. I thought that he just had that face mask and ripped it off. i tell you, we came into this game thinking Sean Taylor, their first pick, safety would be the guy making the impact. It's There's been no foul. For grass and face mask. Timeout. So the Tampa defense has awakened. Matt Bowen's been awake since the start. The Bucks get it back. They still trail by seven. It's a hot topic of debate. So they have the right to do that. Yeah. When seasoned experts go head to head. That wasn't the only off-field drama. And cover all angles of arguments. Uh, oh no, I've always had problems with politics and sports. Because there's a lot more to sport than what happens on the field. Yeah, my marriage has ruined my golf career too. <laughs> when you want to read between the lines and get the facts straight. They realise they do have to toughen up. Flick to the back page. Tonight, 7.30, Fox Sports 1. Friday nights, it's how to to the rescue. I'm all set, let's do it. All right. Whether you need a little help with that special project around the house, or you're just looking for a new weekend challenge. Really important when you're starting this project or any project to be very organized. How to has got the programs that show you all those handy tips and tricks for jobs that can be done in just two days. Welcome to Weekend Gardening, where cool garden ideas come to life with just two days of work. From gardening to decorating, remodeling to landscaping, your weekends will never be the same again. Today, we're going to spruce up this entry with new lighting fixtures, a pathway, tile, and lots of plants. Project Weekend, Friday nights from 7.30 on the How To Channel. This weekend on Fox Sports, Gulf's three-day war begins again. The USA and Europe head-to-head -head in the 35th Ryder Cup. Isn't that unbelievable? In cricket, the ICC Champions Trophy, South Africa take it to the Windies, and intense rivalry reignited as India meet Pakistan, live and exclusive. Absolutely stunning. Catch four live games from the English Premier League. And Dr. Rossi carves up the kilometres, the Japanese MotoGP exclusively live at That's Fox Sports, Sports this, this weekend. weekend. This is kickoff weekend across the National Football League. And it's a 10-3 Redskin lead. The Buccaneers got some things accomplished on their last drive. Got into Redskin territory, but had to punt. And on first down, they hand it to Garner. And there's just been nowhere for him to go. He makes the most of it, gets out to the 28. Let's go to JB, who's standing by with a game break. Hey, Joe, any way the Lions can get it, they'll take it. Field goal blocked here by Sean Rogers of the Lions. That was a Chicago attempt. Gracie Walker takes it. Hey, fellas, he returns it 92 yards. What you won't see, he was sucking wind about 30 yards from pay dirt, but he got there. 10 7 Lions back to Joe Buck. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't have time to show it all. Johnson fires. That's Dudley. And Ricky Dudley with a huge catch into Washington territory, covered by Bowen, a gain of 23. So there we go. They have thrown two passes down the field now. They had a drop by Joey Galloway for a touchdown, and they hit this one. And what it does defensively to you is it just forces those linebackers to drop a little bit deeper, and now the Bucks go into the no huddle. Biggest gain of the day. 23 yards and Johnson ready to throw again. That's Garner and he couldn't make the catch. 
And I like what they're doing going to the no huddle. They went to it obviously there at the end of the first half. They were able to generate a little bit of offense. They go to it now. One, it picks up the tempo for Tampa Bay offensively, but probably more importantly, it keeps this Washington defense from being able to get calls in from the sidelines from Greg Williams. It keeps them from being able to set up their blitzes, and that's the thing that's been hurting this Tampa Bay offense. Well, that and it begins to wear down those defensive linemen, and they can't get substitutes on and off the field. It's really an effective weapon, but you, in order for it to be effective, you have to get a drive going to wear them down. Blitz coming again. And it's batted down by LeVar Arrington, and he was hoping to get to it. You know, LeVar Arrington has talked about the year that he expects to have, and I fully expect him to have a breakout season. He's always been on the verge, but Greg Williams is using him in a lot of different ways. Here he's rushing the passer as he has been throughout a good part of the day, gets his hands on the ball, but this is one of the playmakers on this defensive team, and they've got to allow him to, to, to run the field and use his speed and his size and some of the things that he does best, and Greg Williams is certainly putting him in that position to do it. How many linebackers in the league do you think make that play right there? Now with that kind of vertical so him and maybe Ray Lewis. Third down and ten. Extra rushers for the Redskins, and this one's aired out for Clayton. Incomplete. Boy, Fred Smoot's having a day today. All the discussion about Champ Bailey and the trade to the Denver Broncos. Locked up one on one. They came with the blitz that time, the out and up. And not only did he make this play, what was really impressive about that was is he didn't get the interference call. He didn't put his hands on the receiver down the field. Tremendous play by Fred Smoot. He's had a great game today. Bidwell hangs this one high. Better than his last attempt. And Morton with a fair catch just outside his own 10. So we're going back and forth, back and forth. No scoring in this second half. Still 10-3. Oh, the flair of tennis's richest slam, the U.S. Open. It's also the last chance to secure a Grand Slam title this year. The men's singles final this afternoon at 1.30, Fox Sports 2. Imagine a whole channel devoted to... Mm. Mm, that's interesting, though. Imagine a whole channel devoted to... Yeah. That's going to work. That's it. Well, out of the lifestyle oven comes lifestyle food. Not just a symphony, it's an entire opera. From the first taste to the last drop, lifestyle food is a channel totally devoted to what we love most. Seven. Food. Fresh, fresh, fresh. I've repeated that three times. Inspire your senses. Mm. And indulge your taste buds. That's fantastic. Ooh. Meet superstar chefs. So easily thrown together. And loads of new faces. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, wicked. That should do it. That should blow his head off. Experience lifestyle food. Only on digital. Upgrade now. Tomorrow morning from the Premiership. The action continues with the Addicts up against the Saints, live at five. And there is no substitute for class. The Barclays English Premier League, live and exclusive on Fox Sports. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. By Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. By Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And by Wendy's 99 cent super value menu. It's better here. From their own 11, the Redskins will take over. So far, the offense for Washington has been shut down in this second half. We're talking about what a great game Fred Smoot is having right here as he blurs across your screen is going to take out tight end Dave Moore. That's 174 pounds hitting 250 pounds of tight end without him looking. 
without him looking. <laughs> but he did get the, he did get a little aerial in there. That's embarrassing for the big guys. Well, he it? didn't see it coming. I'm That's all right. Well, it's still like him a little slack. <laughs> Come on. It's great when the little guys win a battle every once in a while. On second down, the ball's loose. The Bucks have it, and they are into the end zone for a touchdown. Brunel couldn't get it to Portis, and it's Rondé Barber who comes up with the ball and the score. Yeah, Joe, and that's what we talk about. You leave a team in it. I mean, there's no question that Washington has dominated this game. But if you leave a team in, which Washington has done, and not taking advantage of the opportunities that they had, you're one play away from all of a sudden tying up the score. One more mistake by Washington. Brunel going to the ground. He tries to make the handoff. Probably should have just tried eating it and taking the loss. Instead, he tries making the handoff. The ball's fumbled, and there goes Barber tying the game up. And, Troy, it looked like he was stepped on by one of his offensive linemen coming away. And Mark Brunel, and I know it's an instantaneous decision, but at that moment, you're much better off just eating that ball because Rondé Barber now with seven touchdowns in his career, and that one cost him in a big way. So Brunel falling, trying to get it to Portis. Into the air, into the arms of Barber, into the end zone. It's a tie game. Joe Gibbs reaction, it's 10 10. Nine thirty tonight on Fox Sports One. The most comprehensive roundup of all the weekend's Premier League action. The Premier League Highlight Show. Great goals, controversies, and no doubt, a thousand talking points. Oh, wonderful! He almost tore the net off! Can you believe that? Catch all the action of the Highlight Show tonight at 9.30, Fox Sports 1. Quite incredible! Friday nights, it's how to to the rescue. I'm all set, let's do it. All right. Whether you need a little help with that special project around the house, or you're just looking for a new weekend challenge. Really important when you're starting this project or any project to be very organized. How to has got the programs that show you all those handy tips and tricks for jobs that can be done in just two days. Welcome to weekend gardening, where cool garden ideas come to life with just two days of work. From gardening to decorating, remodeling to landscaping, your weekends will never be the same again. Today, we're going to spruce up this entry with new lighting fixtures, a pathway, tile, and lots of plants. Project Weekend, Friday nights from 7.30 on the How To Channel. Fox Sports serving of Top Line Tennis continues. The Games Elite are all set for maximum game in Spain. Keen to be crowned the Master of Madrid. Next stop, Paris. It's the last chance to impress as the series reaches its finale. Then the heat is on in Houston at the Tennis Masters Cup. Only the best in the business get an invite to this elite tennis party. The ATP Masters Series continues live and exclusive Fox Sports. Swimming, the U.S. hosts the World Superstars of the Pool in the FINA World Short Course Championships, live from Indianapolis. That's October on Fox Sports. Taking over at center for Letty Friedman. With Lenny out and Raymer in there. It was Raymer who tripped up Brunel. This is Morton. Penalty flag on the play as Morton is ripped down shy of the 25. There was no injury to Lenny Friedman as Friedman now comes back out to take over at center, but it was that foot mix-up between Raymer and Brunel that just cost the Redskins seven During points. the return, holding, receiving team, number 94, half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, and this is what happens as a quarterback. You got Corey Raymer stepping on his foot. As you're going to see, steps on his foot there, and that's why Mark Brunel goes down. I don't know whether or not Corey Raymer took a step back or if Mark Brunel took a step forward, but whatever happened, the end result was a touchdown for Tampa Bay. You know, it's just so tough, Troy, when you have that reach block on the nose tackle, that offset nose, you can't get there. Had to step back. Instead of taking a break, we are going to stay here with the ball after the penalty. Sitting just outside the seven yard line. 
We take another look at that play from the overhead. The reach block is on this guy right here, the offset nose tackle. And anytime he's in that gap, you get a lot of penetration up the field. So he essentially has to step back to try and make that block. And when he does, he steps right on Mark Brunel's foot. Carry Portis has been corralled by Tampa Bay. And let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, that Rondé Barber touchdown certainly hushed the crowd, but it was interesting watching Joe Gibbs and how he responded to it. Sure, he didn't like it, but he made it a point of staying calm. In fact, he simply just gathered up the guys on offense when they came off the field. He gestured for them to just calm down and relax, saying everything's going to be okay. Well, as we've seen so many times, Tampa Bay's defense now taking over the game. Oh, Clint Portis was hit and hit hard. Rondé Barber was the first one to get there. Ellis Wims again was there to clean up. That'll bring up third down for the Redskins. Well, and what we've seen here in the second half is momentum is clearly on Tampa Bay's defense. Washington has really not been able to do much. Of course, the turnover, the touchdown. Now Washington backed up again near their own goal line. This is a big third down. If they're unable to convert here and have to punt, Tampa Bay offensively is going to get good field position. Third down and nine. Pass is complete to Portis. It looked like there was a hold. Kenyatta Jones was trying to keep Spires out of the face of Brunel, and they threw the flag. This is the kind of Tampa Bay pass rush we're used to seeing, especially on Number third long. On the outside, no question about it. Greg Spires coming hard off the corner, and he's just going to get him wrapped around his head and hook and pull and yank, and Brunel backing out of there. Another big play by the defense. This Buccaneers defense now starting to look like the old Buccaneers defense. Remember, that hold takes place in the end zone. That's a safety. They call the hold outside the end zone. As you look at John Jansen, who was slated to start at right tackle before the injury. So the Buccaneers are going to get it right back. Schrader bobbles it. And is able to get back on top of it. He got away with one there. Schrader thought he had room to run. You saw him look downfield before he fielded that ball. Got his eyes off of it and almost gave it right back to Washington. And we've seen Schrader do that every time. He brings his eyes back up to the football very late. He studies the approaching tacklers, and then he just last minute glances up at the ball, and that time it cost him. You take another look. He's going to look down the field first. Right there, he's looking to see where the oncoming tacklers are and then you got to pick the ball up again and looked like he had a shot at it and saw it but lost concentration they were fortunate to get that one back only 149 yards of total offense for the Buccaneers they have their 10 points thanks to the turnover and a kick return so they're still trying to figure out how to move the ball and that's Clayton out to midfield this is only the first half of a double header coming up on Fox and the late games are really interesting games with the Falcons at the 49ers along with the Cowboys at the Vikings and of course the Giants Kurt Warner taking on the Philadelphia Eagles with their new weapons of Javon Curse and Terrell Owens yeah, and that's the game I'm really interested in seeing how it goes of course Philadelphia a lot expected of them but then the Giants as well how does Kurt Warner do coming out of the blocks I can't wait to see what Minnesota and Dallas do. I think that's a huge matchup early in the season. And Jim Moore Jr. going back out to San Francisco. This is all Scott. Runs through a couple of would-be tacklers and is brought down right at the first down marker. Looked like he got enough for a fresh set. Well, pretty amazing what Mike Allstott's gone through last season and then on into the offseason, had neck surgery and put in a cadaver bone in his neck along with a titanium plate and four screws and how anybody can come back from that and play the tailback and fullback position where basically he's a battering ram. But I had a chance to visit with him before the game. He said never at any point did he consider retirement and the neck feels great and he's ready to roll. Good hard run there to get a first down for the Buccaneers. 
Johnson to the near side of the field and falling down the entire time was Garner. Couldn't stay on his feet even though he was wide open. Well, and you saw Garner, he was upset. The ball didn't get to him, but if Brad's able to get the ball in his hands instead of a low ball, he's able to catch it and run and probably pick up the first down. Hey, they were lucky on that one. Cozy Coleman didn't get called for a hold, too. Boy, oh boy, you get a guy with that sort of athleticism that open in the open field. He could be dangerous. Second down and ten, they hand off to Garner. He gets it to the 44, a gain of three. Pretty good call there by John Gruden. He understands that Greg Williams' big package is third down, and when you're third and long, third and ten, that's when he likes to really come after you with a lot of different personnel groupings and blitzes. Run the ball on second down, try to get it into a manageable third down, even though now it's third and seven. You got a little bit more options offensively to try to pick this up. Complete fourth down. And the 12th man stood up for the Redskins with this big home crowd. And Andre Lott is having a fantastic game replacing Sean Taylor. That time they come with the blitz. He curls back underneath. One of the things that Greg Williams likes to do when he blitzes is run to where he thinks the hot reads are going to be. That time Clayton came on the slant, which is the hot read, and they knew exactly where it was. Andre Lott ran right underneath it. Great job of defense, team defense by the Redskins. Gruden wanted pass interference, and Lott never got turned for the ball. Thought they should have thrown a flag. Bidwell hangs it high. Morton. With Gooch right in his face, hauls in the fair catch. It's getting heated up here with this opening weekend. Redskins pumped up as they get the ball in a tie game. Sports 2 this Sunday afternoon. Get your fix of MotoGP live from midday. Whoa, here we go again. Someone's gone down. The place has gone crazy. Once again, it's Valentino. The MotoGP from Japan, Sunday at midday, live on Fox Sports 2. Can Rossi do it again? Time to put your game face on because the new season of NBL tips off live on Fox Sports September 29th. Let's go. How many dudes you know go like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many. Bring that finny. Not many. And finny. How many dudes you know got skills go. going? Rock a show like this. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know anybody. Live games Wednesday and Saturday night, plus for Foxtel and All-Star Digital subscribers, Sports Active on selected games. Raise your arm, let me see you throw it up. And I will uh -huh. always represent my crew to set the cross. Uh -huh. How many dudes you know go like this? How many dudes yeah. you know go like this? Not many, infinity, not many. If any, how many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock a show like this? New season of NBL on Fox tips off September 29 on your home of hoops, Fox Sports. Visa, get ready for the game. Andre Lott is going to fake a blitz up here and then drop right underneath the route. They anticipate this. They bring a pressure to this side, try and make you throw hot. And then it hits Andre Lott right in the back of the head. One thing about it, though, if you have an experienced wide receiver, Michael Clayton, just a rookie, he draws pass interference there. Not a tough call if you're a wide receiver who slows down and makes him run into him because Lott was not turned and looking for the football, and they could have easily drawn the pass interference. Then Portis's first run went for 64 yards. Since then, he's rushed it 18 times for only 44. Play action here. Brunel for Cooley. They love this kid. The first down, Chris Cooley, the rookie, 15-yard pickup. I mean, the protection that Mark Brunel gets on this play 
is absolutely ridiculous. Take a look. I don't care if you're rushing three guys, four guys, or five guys. There's no reason in the National Football League a quarterback should be able to stand back there and have that kind of time. And when he does, they're going to pick you apart. There's not a quarterback in this league that can't complete passes with that kind of time to throw. And Chris Cooley came clear across from the other side of the field to make that catch along the other sideline. That is the end of the third quarter. That was Washington's first first down of the second half. They have the ball at their own 31. Fourth quarter coming up. NFL on Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox station. The world's leading cricketing nations have their eyes on just one prize. The ICC Champions Trophy. Who will be crowned the finest one-day team? Australia versus United States tonight at 7. Fox Sports 2. Meet the stars behind the game with Tui's new snapshots. The moment I was told uh, I was selected to play for England, that actual moment when you knew you were going to play. Um, in the final of Wimbledon in 1985, when uh, Kathy Jordan and I played my turn never to over and Pam Shriver, they hadn't lost for about two and a half years, 109 matches, and we got them in the final of Wimbledon, so uh, that's probably the one that I remember most. My last game at Leichhardt Oval, just all the people that turned up and the emotion of the day. It's the people who make the sport on Tui's new snapshots. Tui's new. What makes do? This weekend on Fox Sports, Gulf's three-day war begins again. The USA and Europe head-to-head -head in the 35th Ryder Cup. Isn't that unbelievable? In cricket, the ICC Champions Trophy. South Africa take it to the Windies and intense rivalry reignited as India meet Pakistan. Live and exclusive. Absolutely stunning. Catch four live games from the English Premier League. And Dr. Rossi carves up the kilometres. The Japanese MotoGP exclusively live at Fox Sports this weekend. Major League Baseball reaches the playoffs with the Divisional Series, the League Championship, and the World Series all live October on Fox Sports. We start the fourth quarter. And a first down for the Redskins. We've been caught in the second half on a fumble return for a touchdown by Rondé Barber. It's 10-10 with 15 minutes to go. is to Portis and he lost yardage first one there was Brooks Chris Cooley led all NCAA tight ends a season ago in receiving and I'm not sure that Joe Gibbs has ever had the type of receiving threat at the H back position that he has with Cooley and as far as Shelton Quarles is concerned I just don't think he could believe he fit this ball in there he had perfect coverage running right underneath it felt completely comfortable Cooley just went up and made the play to become the latter-day Clint Didier is Cooley for Joe Gibbs as this pass is through the hands of Clinton Portis after that completion to Cooley for the first down this was Quarles reaction over on the sideline so he went really fast that way for an H back H backs aren't supposed to be that fast Quarles who has 10 tackles on the day Anthony McFarland was banged up on that last play, but able to walk off under his own power. Just can't say enough about the courageous effort of Tampa Bay's defense today to score the touchdown and to hang in there in what was just a whitewashing by their offense in the first half and just decided that as we have seen them do so many times in the days with Warren Sapp and John Lynch, they were just going to take over the football game, and that's exactly what they did in the third quarter. Clinton Portis was walking around gingerly after dropping that last pass. Good game in Houston, 2020 with the Chargers. And the Texans. Third down and 12. Pass is complete but well shy of a first down. That's Liddell Betts. Bring up fourth down. 
Well, another good job there by this Tampa defense. And, you know, as you mentioned, Chris, Tampa Bay defensively, after that first play, when they gave up the 64 yard touchdown run to Clinton Portis, they, they've hung in there pretty well. And they've given this team an opportunity to win. Now they're just waiting for the offense to come along for the ride. Good punt by Tupa. On a line, fielded on a hop. Schrader did all he could. 14 yard return by Bill Schrader. The leaping, high jumping Bill Schrader. 10 10. The Bucks have it. Seven Action Sports Television. Fuel, your new home of freestyle sports. Basketball, a new season of NBL hoops it up. Two live games a week throughout October on Fox Sports. The Hayden goes over the top, way over the top. Hit that one, and that's going to go for six as well. Buccaneers have it. A 10-10 game, fourth quarter. Will it come down to one of these two guys deciding it? And how do you feel down in Tampa, Florida, about our team Gramatica? He's already hit from 47 today, one for one. This is Charlie Garner. He has not had much room to run today. Garner picked up a few over the left side as you see Arizona take a lead over St. Louis. And you watch the scores roll through on the top of your screen. The offensive woes continue for the Baltimore Ravens, a team that a lot of people like to go to the Super Bowl this year. With the Jets taking care of Cincinnati. Second down and seven. Quick throw. That's Tim Brown coming back to get it. Then he lost the ball out of bounds, and they are going to call it a catch. And that's a first down. Good route by Tim Brown. They like to use him in the slot more so than outside wide, but these are the kinds, kinds of things that Tim Brown can do. I'm not so sure he caught not that either. ball. Let's see if they... Joe Gibbs chooses to challenge the play, but you know those are the types of things that Tim Brown can do. He's, he, he doesn't have great speed any longer. He's got to work the inside things, and you got to be pretty precise in where you place the ball for him. You've got to make the catch, secure the ball, and be able to make another football act. And I'm not so sure that that qualified, but no challenge. That pass is high for Clayton, and Michael Clayton gets it to the 40. You know, Joe, you kind of wonder if, you know, of course, they didn't have the instant replay as it's in now when Joe Gibbs was coaching in his previous coaching tenure, and you just kind of wonder if he's a little uncomfortable with it. We've seen some things already today where he hasn't challenged it, and I don't know who he's got up in the booth that's, that's given him some advice, but they've missed out on a couple chances that could have changed the outcome of this game. Clearly the one on the goal line. That one a little tougher. You don't want to blow a timeout in this type of a ball game. You can almost understand that. But that one in the first half, no explanation. Second down and six. Pressure and an interception. Picked off by Antonio Pierce. Getting 
the start today playing for the injured Mike Farrell. And boy, does that pay off after a 16-yard return. Look like Jermaine Haley at the top of your screen going to end up getting the pressure right up the gut. And Brad Johnson simply unable to step into the throw. And watch more athletic skills from the linebackers of the Redskins. Great catch. They've been raving about Pierce during the preseason. He carries it over. Cold heart. It's a hot topic of debate. Do they have the right to do this? Right. When seasoned experts go head to head. That wasn't the only off field drama. And cover all angles of arguments. Uh, oh no, I've always had problems with politics and sports. Because there's a lot more to sport than what happens on the field. Yeah, my marriage has ruined my golf career too. <laughs> when you want to read between the lines and get the facts straight. They realise they do have to toughen up. Click to the back page. Tonight, 7.30, Fox Sports 1. Meet the stars behind the game with Tui's new snapshots. I uh, have to be Ian Botham. He's uh, about the only Englishman that's uh, smashed the Aussies around and, uh, and helped us win the Ashes. I admire the whole Australian team. I wouldn't like to single any of them out. I think uh, they're a wonderful group of players. I'd hate to say it, but uh, Tim Horan, uh, fantastic athlete and a uh, pretty good bloke. Uh, probably Brad Fittler and Andrew Johns, uh, but growing up, I was Wally Lewis. It's the people who make the sport on Tui's new snapshots. Tui's new. What makes do? It's one of the last great sporting events founded on prestige rather than prize money. Spanning 34 competitions over 77 years. For golf's golden chalice, discover the history, importance and strategies behind this great team event before the 35th Ryder Cup tees off. Live and exclusive on Fox Sports. Countdown to the Ryder Cup, Wednesday night, 8.30, Fox Sports 1. Thanks to the interception by Antonio Pierce, this will be the deepest that the Redskins have had the ball in Tampa territory this entire half. Taking the place of the injured Mike Farrell. Out of the tendonitis in his knee, and Pierce gets a key interception. In a 10-10 game. Brunel trying to set up a screen. He does with Portis. And Portis a nice game. Let's go back to the interception. Yeah, you go back to that interception, and sometimes people ask how a quarterback can make a throw that seemingly is right into the hands of a defender. Jermaine Haley puts the pressure right here on, on Brad, and so right here is Antonio Pierce. That's the guy he can't see because of the pressure. You've got the receiver running across. Brad Johnson, all he sees is open middle of the field. He lets it go, but it, it's because of the pressure by Jermaine Haley that allowed Antonio Pierce to come up with that interception. Well, that and the eclipse of the sun with Jermaine Haley coming at him right down the gut. Second down and three. And off is to Portis. He's got a first down and more. Clinton Portis down to the 16. Wow. It's starting to change here. Let's go out for a game break in JB. Hey, Joe, not as pretty a run as Clinton Portis, but effective. Emmett Smith, who's poo-pooed the critics, saying, I'm still in good shape. 11 yards to pay dirt. Cardinals on top by one. And many are asking, is Terrell Owens the missing key for Philadelphia to get to the Super Bowl? We'll find out. Most of you will see the Giants at the Eagles. That game coming up later. Back to Joe Buck. JB, thanks. First down for Washington. The Tampa Bay 16. Portis, a lot of Clinton Portis. And they got two over the left side here. Did you guys see the move that Clinton Portis made? I, I would have broken both my kneecaps on this move. Watch him go directly sideways. Well, that's one, but watch this. I mean, he is at full speed going directly laterally out of a cut and still maintains his speed up the field. I, you know, Barry Sanders was the greatest in the world at that, but that's pretty close. That got the ball to the 16. Now the ball is at the 13. That is a career average, too, by the way, for Portis. 5.6 yards per carry. Gets it again. And, Joe, just to follow up on that point a little bit, the best in NFL history is Franco Harris at 5.2. Clinton Portis just doesn't have enough carries yet 
to be at the top of that list. But he is clearly, at least thus far in his career, among the very best that have ever played the game. See him at the top of the list, a minimum of 500 carries. So that adds a lot of people, and that's why you see a guy like Jim Brown third on that list. But Clinton Portis is off to a great start. And this is third season, third down and six. Brunel fires, the pass is nearly picked off. Ian Gold had it hit him in the hand, but he wasn't looking for it. That brings up fourth down. Yeah, he was so caught up in watching the receiver and trying to cover him that he didn't get his head back to the quarterback in time. You see Ian Gold, he comes out here on the Vernius Coles. Had he have been looking back at the quarterback, easy interception for him. And I saw a couple of referees out there counting. How many yards was that? One, two, three, four, five, and a tenth maybe. But they didn't throw the flag. You have five yards to make that kind of contact, and that was right at five yards. 30-yard try to put Washington back on top. Ball one for two on the day. Two out of three, and it's 13-10 Redskins. But not a bad job by this Buccaneers defense to hold them just to a field goal after the big turnover. Joe Gibbs, his first game back, didn't even want to watch that field goal try. Joe, you're leading 13-10. Fox Sports One wraps up the weekend in a great lineup from 7.30 every Monday night. Following Fox Sports News, an hour of topical discussion from the back page team. That wasn't the only off-field draft. No, I've always had problems with politics and sport. At 8.30, NRL scoreboard takes the ball and runs with it. Inside winners and scores. Oh, no. two leverage. You're kidding. At 9.30, it's the Premier League Highlight Show, your one-stop roundup from all the weekend's action. Oh, wonderful! Monday night has what you need on Fox Sports One. Predicting the weather may seem impossible. Not anymore. The Weather Channel has you covered. Get instant access to your current weather and forecasts. Weather Direct gives you your complete local picture in 90 seconds, every five minutes. And when you need expert information, we deliver. The Weather Channel. Live by it. Fuller races up inside his Australian teammate Wilson. He looks nice and relaxed and long in stride. Lamar and Benitez just dropping back through the field now. Fuller leads them on the straight by a very considerable margin. He's only about 30 metres away from securing his fourth gold medal. Coming second is Helm, but Fuller's leading the field by 20 metres. Fuller comes up and takes gold. 52-27, Helm of Germany silver, Queen of United States bronze. Swimming, the U.S. hosts the World Superstars of the Pool in the FINA World Short Course Championships, live from Indianapolis. That's October on Fox Sports. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. A disappointing day for the Buccaneers' offense has really continued. They're now without Joey Galloway, who left, re-injuring that groin in the first half. Street flows and crutches on the sideline. So the Buccaneers need some help on the outside. Seen a lot of Michael Clayton, the rookie, in this second half. Penalty flag comes in on this return as Murphy is ripped down. Looks like two different penalties out there, Joe. Probably an illegal block in the back and then a face mask, although I hesitate to call, call one after I missed the last one. It looked like that's what it was at the end of the play. Well, I know that Murphy was grabbed and then came shooting backward. There was a flag earlier on the play. There are two fouls on the play. During return, holding, receiving team, number 56. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, kicking team, number 10. The foul's all set at the spot of the receiving team's foul. First down, Tampa Bay. So it's John Hall, the kicker, called for the face mask. Wasn't even looking at him when he goes in there to make the play. And 
but how, that, how is that know. only a five-yard <laughs> grasp in the base pass, though? It was a personal foul. No, it was it, it was a 15 yards, and it's offset, so they get the ball right there, and would have had great field position if they didn't have the hold on the other end against them. Right? That just shows you these these kickers; they don't spend a whole lot of time in tackling drills. 8:49 remaining. The Buccaneers down by three. Charlie Garner, one of his better runs straight ahead of the day, a gain of seven. You know, Charlie Garner, he hasn't really gotten much room to run today. And, you know, really an explosive running back. I remember the first time I saw him run, this guy, several years ago, he runs like he's just shot out of a cannon. And today, however, the, the running's been pretty tough for him. Second down and three. Pass over the middle. That's Brown, and that's a catch. Shy of a first down. Matt Bowen on the stop. Yeah, who else but Matt Bowen there to make the play? Guy's been all over the place today. And again, they are protecting that between the hash mark area about five yards deep. That time, the strong safety Matt Bowen coming right up there to make that play, and that's really what they've tried to take away from Brad Johnson today. Third down and one, what will it be? They've got all stopped in the backfield. It is all stopped, and it is a first down. And that's really what the Buccaneers missed so much a season ago. Talking with the Buccaneers center, John Wade, he says, I love Mike Allstott. He said, I can't tell you how many times on the goal line and in short yardage situations, there's not a hole. We didn't make a hole. And he picks up the first down or scores a touchdown. And everybody says, great job, offensive line. It's Mike Allstott, and they missed him desperately a season ago. So John Wade was telling you that he's the reason that he had neck surgery? <laughs> Didn't exactly phrase it like that. First down for Tampa Bay, and it's dropped off to Allstott. It was hit, wrapped up by Springs. Nice play, only a gain of one. You know, we touched on it a little bit earlier how predictable Tampa Bay can get offensively as far as their intermediate to shorter throws. And I know that John Gruden was extremely excited about the potential of Joey Galloway and what he could do in this offense. They'd not had him. And one time they get him down the field, he drops the ball that would have been a touchdown, and he's done for the rest of the day. And you wonder how much longer he's going to be out. But now they still do have Bill Schrader, and I think they've got to utilize him and try to stretch this defense because right now you got 11 guys within 12 yards of the ball playing defense against these guys. Second down and nine. Pressure. Johnson. Set. Ron Warner was the first to get there, and Ronaldo Wynn, his friend, was there to help. And Todd Stusey playing the right tackle position for the Buccaneers, moved over from left tackle a season ago. He's struggling out here on the outside. No question, he is not as quick as he once was, and right now the Redskins taking advantage. Well, John Gruden decides to try to get guys out there on the route. When you do that, you leave one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board for the offensive line. Stusey not getting any help from any back, and he got beat. Third down and 14. Timeout, Buccaneers. They spend their first timeout and talk about a big third down play when we come back. Leon. Oh, the flair of tennis's richest slam, the U.S. Open. It's also the last chance to secure a Grand Slam title this year. The men's singles final, this afternoon at 1.30, Fox Sports 2. 20th Century Fox and the Fuel Channel wants you to go off for the release of this year's most outrageous sport flick, Dodgeball. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Celebrate, you and a mate could cut it up in Adelaide for five nights, whether it's golfing, fishing, a tour of the Barossa Valley, and total access to the nude Olympics. I'm not wearing any panties. To answer, call 1900 966 596 and leave your details. It's all thanks to Dodgeball in cinemas September 9. He made a bet, and she's got an agenda. Oh, you are already falling in love with me. I'm gonna make you wish you were dead. How to lose a guy in 10 days. 
on Showtime. Fox Sports 2 this Sunday afternoon. Get your fix of MotoGP live from midday. Whoa, here we go again. Someone's got that. The place has gone crazy. Once again, it's Valentino Rossi. The MotoGP from Japan, Sunday at midday, live on Fox Sports 2. Can Rossi do it again? 31 days of live sport. That's Fox Sports in October. Major League Baseball reaches the playoffs with the Divisional Series, the League Championship and the World Series all live. That's October on Fox Sports. Third and 14 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers down by three. And Greg Williams is going to blitz here, try and force a hot throw, make the tackle short of the first down. Blitz, Johnson, Bowen, another. The play is dead. But it's Matt Bowen yet again. Nine tackles for Bowen and pressure all day long. Yeah, and this is what happens when you've got an offensive line that hasn't been playing together. Matt Stinchcomb, he pulls to the outside, and that's what opens the lane up there for Matt Bowen to come right up through the gap. Derek Deese didn't play throughout preseason. He did not get a chance to work with Matt Stinchcomb, and it's paying dividends right now for Washington because they're taking advantage of him. You know, we've talked so much about Joe Gibbs, but maybe the biggest thing that happened this offseason is Greg Williams and this changeover on the defensive side. They've been amazing today. Good punt by Bidwell. Sends Morton back. It's out beyond the 30. Take a look at what we have seen here today, if you are just joining us. It is the Redskin return of Joe Gibbs and a great Redskins debut for Clinton Portis. Galloway injured as he almost came down with a touchdown. This turnover, a turn for six by Rondé Barber tied it. And then the interception by Antonio Pierce. A big defensive play for a guy who was slated to start this season backing up. And this is a great test for the Washington offense. The championship teams that Joe Gibbs had would run out the clock from here on the offensive side. You'd never see the ball again because they'd be able to run it down your throat. It's Clinton Portis. Goes back to the right side. Making moves all along, and he's finally wrestled down by Smith after a gain of five. And it's also a great test for this Tampa Bay defense, knowing what Joe Gibbs and this Washington offense would like to do. And this game's a long way from being over. Tampa Bay's got to come up with a stop. They can't allow Washington to run down the clock or get points. And if they're able to do that, put the ball back in their hands with a chance to go down the field and tie with potentially win the game. Tremendous play by Clinton Portis knowing it was he got close to the sideline to get down and not allow that clock to stop. He's just going to stay in bounds there. Really a heads up play by a young man. Second down and five. It's Portis again. Game break time. Here comes JB. Hey, Joe, you know all too well how much St. Louis is plagued by turnovers. However, Mark Bolger hooking up eight yards with Isaac Bruce. Two-point conversion by Marshall Falk is good. And the Rams looking for their 15th straight win at home on top 17-10. Back to Joe Buck. All right, J.B., thanks. And Mark Bolger has been at the controls during that long regular season home winning streak for St. Louis. What a catch by Bruce. That game's a little tighter than anyone anticipated. Third down and four. Penalty flag on the play as the pass is complete for a first down. Ernius Coles comes up with a big catch and will check the marker. Great route that time by Lavernius Coles. See if the first down will stand. It came flying out of the secondary. Penalty flag. 
back judge through it. Now he's the one doing the talking in that little meeting. Now the flags came across were personal foul, grasping the face mask, defense, number 55, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, that back judge now explains his call to Derek Brooks. Take a look and see what exactly happened. There it is, right here. Derek Brooks grabbing Walter Rasby, and really a good play by Washington, getting Brunel out on the edge. Gives him a lot of options as far as receivers and them running away from defenders. Of course, Cole standing out on the sideline and able to secure the catch. It was a great round, too. A double round. He faked a quick out. Ran back up the field, came back on the comeback, knew where the first down marker was. Really a veteran route, great play. Under three and a half to go. Buccaneers with only two timeouts remaining. 340! Expect this to be on the ground. It is with Clinton Portis. Out of his run. Down to the 31, a gain of seven. And if you go back to last season in Tampa Bay and some of the problems that they had, they had a hard time finishing games as a defense. When they had an opportunity to shut down an opponent and win a game, they failed to do that on a number of occasions. Here, down by three, with a little over three minutes to play, they've got to be able to stop this offense knowing exactly what it is that they're trying to do, and that's the mark of a great defense. You can take the statistics and talk about what they've done during the course of a 50-minute game or 55-minute game, but when the game's on the line, how do they react? And right now, they're not reacting very well in this one. Second down and three. Quick snap count this time, and it's Portis again. Portis just shy of first down yardage. Well, you knew what a great athlete Clinton Portis was, and his big play capability last year in Denver, five plays over 50 yards. We've already seen one today. But I tell you what is really impressing me is the way that he's running between the tackles. He's an all-around back. He's just not a scat back that gets outside and makes big plays. He has the guts to go between the tackles, put his head down, and pick up big first downs. With the clock winding down, the Buccaneers are forced to use their second timeout. So now they have only one timeout remaining. Obviously, the two-minute warning. But the Redskins are looking at a third down and one. If they can pick up a first down here, Ride that right on to their first win of the year and welcome back Joe Gibbs the way all these fans have packed into this stadium. Drove here, parked here, filed into this park to see. Now this is what they came to see, no question. And they boy, they've been awfully excited about Joe's return, and rightfully so. And we saw that shot there of Clinton Portis. And you know, obviously pretty winded. He's put in a good day's work today, 27 carries and you know, that's well above the average that he had when he was there in Denver. You do what you have to do to win a game, but with that kind of workload, you wonder how long he can hold up. That's the big question with him. I think this is four down territory. I think they'll take two shots. Hot, hot. On third down and one, it's Portis. There's the first down. And Portis has had a tremendous first day as a Redskin. Sure has. I don't know how good Champ Bailey's going to be in Denver, but I know they're feeling pretty good about that trade right here in Washington. Again, third and short. They don't bring in a big back. They don't do anything. They give it to their big money guy, and he picks up this first down with his quickness and desire. Slips a tackle of Ian Gold, and this has been dirtbag heaven. That's what they're calling this offensive line now with the Redskins. The Hawks no more. They are the dirtbags, and they've had a great first day in this 2004 season. Tomorrow morning from the Premiership, the action continues with the Addicts up against the Saints live at 5. And there is no substitute for class. The Barclays English Premier League, live and exclusive on Fox Sports. When it comes to secret agents, they're smooth. They're sophisticated, and then there's English. Completely innocent to the untrained eye, but click it twice. Johnny English, premiere Sunday on Showtime. 
Fox Sports serving of Top Line Tennis continues. The Games Elite are all set for maximum gain in Spain. Keen to be crowned a master of Madrid. Next stop, Paris. It's the last chance to impress as the series reaches its finale. Then the heat is on in Houston at the Tennis Masters Cup. Only the best in the business get an invite to this elite tennis party. The ATP Masters Series continues live and exclusive Fox Sports. Cricket fans, imagine sitting in the comfort of your armchair and having the power of the director's seat. You're in control. Ball by ball. Wicket by wicket. It's sports active cricket. He's got him. Highlights, scores, statistics, all with the push of the red button on your remote control. And replays at your fingertips from a classic catch to a masterful stroke. Sports active cricket. Stay on top of the game. It'll have your mates seeing red. Soccer, 18 live games from the English Premier League, plus the highlights and preview shows. That's October on... We hope you have enjoyed today's broadcast in high definition as you watch Fox Sports coverage of the Washington Redskins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lynn Portis has had some day 146 yards on the ground on 28 carries. First down, Washington. Chance to add to the stats and down to the 21 is Portis. To talk more about what you said earlier and what I hinted at back in the first half as the Buccaneers spend their final time out, Joe Gibbs tells of a story over the offseason flying into Buffalo, zero degree weather. There's this guy hiding over in the corner of the private airfield in the lobby with a hat on, waiting for Joe Gibbs to arrive. That person's Greg Williams. Gibbs gets off the plane. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Then the story's out that Red Gibbs get is one big, right. big logo on the but, airplane. But, I mean, yeah. this has been a tremendous addition to this team, and it, it's really been a coup that Joe Gibbs, with all of his buddies and all the guys he brought back, tapped. Williams on the shoulder and said I want you for our defense yeah I think so and, and I don't know if he was hiding because he was in Buffalo and they had played so poorly he didn't want anybody to see him but I tell you what he doesn't have to hide any longer I mean with what he's done here with this team today what a pickup he was for Joe Gibbs they their defenses didn't play poorly in Buffalo though. second down and eight and Portis falls down maybe lost half a yard that'll bring up third down and the Buccaneers cannot stop the clock again without a change of possession. But they will get the ball back if they could make a stop right here. They're not going to get it back with a lot of time left on the clock. But they would then force the Redskins to kick a field goal. And once you get into that type of situation, you never know what can happen. We see well, a lot of strange things in special teams. They'll run it down and then probably run a play on fourth down. So they'd be giving the ball back to Tampa Bay with about 15 seconds on the clock without any timeouts inside the 20. They believe the play clock down to the bitter end and a penalty flag came flying in as there was movement oh. along the defensive front for Tampa Bay. And what a mistake for the Fox. Defense, number 96. Five yard penalty. Oh, wow. Third down. For all the good things Ellis Wims has done today, that is a major mistake. And give Mark Brunel a little credit for the hard count to draw him offside, stops the clock, picks up five yards. Replay the down. That is just brutal, and that's just about wrapping this one up. Clinton Portis just motioned to the crowd with his arms up as the fans realize he may be finished for the day. And if he is, what a day. 5.1 average, a touchdown on his first carry, 64 yard blitz into the end zone, 149 yards on 29 rushes. is to Betts. And he gets it to the 16. It will be a fourth down as we welcome you to the home of the Washington Redskins and now once again the home to Joe Gibbs with this Redskins unit. New stadium for Gibbs but I guess he's not 
unfamiliar with winning a game at home. The Redskins were dominant at home under Joe Gibbs, and they are trying to start this season 1 0. And they're going over in their minds the play clock, the game clock. As the Redskins, I'm sure, will burn a timeout here. With one second remaining on the play clock. 21 seconds left on the game clock. What kind of day has it been? I would say that even though it's a three point game, something we talked about the first half, a dominant day for the Washington Redskins. They didn't get the points. They moved the ball offensively, much more so in the first half. But defensively, John Gruden's offense was overwhelmed by Greg Williams' crew here for the Redskins. Joe, they really were. And, and that does not happen very often to that guy right there, John Gruden. He's one of the best offensive minds in the game of football. So for him to come in and have the kind of offensive output that Tampa Bay had, my hat's off to Greg Williams and getting this team ready to go play. And you know, we touched on it a little bit earlier. Certainly there are some new players for this Washington Redskins team from where they were a year ago. But to me, that's not the big difference. I mean, this staff has done a tremendous job of bringing this group of players together and getting them playing hard. They're going to be well coached. They're going to be well disciplined. And it's not surprising when you look around the league at the teams that are having success. They have coaches a lot like Joe Gibbs, not Hall of Fame coaches, but guys who really get their teams ready to play each and every week. Well, you were right on about a minute ago when you said the Buccaneers would get it back with around 15, 16 seconds left. 21 seconds on the clock now. 34 yard attempt from Hall is just inside the left upright to make it a six point game. There are 16 seconds remaining. Well, you can see Joe Gibbs' mind spinning, trying to decide whether or not he wanted to go for this field goal. Obviously, a lot of things that could happen. And he could have run one play and run this thing down to about 16 seconds. Showed a lot of faith in John Hall sending him out there and allowing him to make that kick. But huge now because Tampa Bay would have to put it in the end zone to win the game. Yeah, I think if there hadn't have been the penalty there, Chris, when Tampa Bay jumped off sides, I, I really think they would have tried to run the clock out on fourth down just to get Brunel or hand the can to a running back and let him run 10 seconds off the clock. And, Rather than risk trying to kick the field goal, having it blocked and having something catastrophic happen. But, you know, now Tampa Bay, obviously, they've got to go the distance and they've got to score a touchdown. Well, the one thing that Tampa has done well all day long is return kickoffs. Uh, I just can't imagine that they're going to take a chance on kicking this thing to Frank Murphy because he's had a great day returning the kicks. But if you squib it too short, you open up the possibility of a Hail Mary in the end zone. Yeah, they struck up the band here at the stadium. It's been a long time since they've done that at the end of a game here, huh? They are in full force with 16 seconds remaining, and Tampa Bay about to get it with no timeouts left. Very little time on the clock. Again, the Buccaneers not have a kickoff return for a touchdown in their franchise history. It's a line drive squib kick. This is Schrader. Is knocked down at the 34 yard line with 11 <laughs> seconds left. Well, you do have an opportunity now, if you're the Bucks, to take a shot at about a 20 yard comeback, something like that, down the sideline, try and step out of bounds, and then set up the Hail Mary because from here, Brad Johnson just can't get it in the end zone. Well, and that's the big key that if they complete anything in order for the next pass to be at a distance that he can get it in the end zone. And on this first completion, they've got to be able to get out of bounds. Anything down the middle of the field, they can never get down there to stop the clock in time. The end of a long day offensively for the Buccaneers ends with a sack. You know, how else could it end? Well, and how fitting. I mean, all, there, all they need to do is get into a prevent defense, but instead, Greg Williams says, we came into the game blitzing them. We're going to end the game blitzing them. And that's how the game ended today. Fourth sack of the afternoon for this Redskins defense. And how about Joe Gibbs? Um, how successful can one human being be? Win three Super Bowls, go tear up NASCAR, come back, win on opening day. Yeah. 
Here's Pam Oliver. All right, Joe, here with Go Joe Gibbs. It must mean a lot to you in this ball game. I'm so proud of our players. They're the ones who deserve the credit. It was extremely hard for us. Lord bless us just, hey, Lord bless us for a great day. Our guys fought their heart out. They got, you got to give Tampa a lot of credit. They're, they're a great football team. It's almost like you never left. You got to understand why the fans are going to be going crazy after this victory. No, I think uh, my heart jumped out of here a couple of times. And uh, so. All right, let's go back to JV in the studio. Welcome to the Sprint Game Break. Sprint is proud to be changing wireless for the better. All right, Pam, thank you so very much as we bring you back to the studio here in Los Angeles. The Redskins statistically dominated the game. As Terry mentioned, the score was still awfully tight. But Joe Gibbs comes away victorious after a 12-season layoff. Joe Gibbs, the return of the conquering hero. Welcome back, Joe. See him in NASCAR. Good to have him back on the sideline. First carry for Clinton Portis, 64-yard touchdown. The Redskins awfully impressive right off the bat. But this was a much harder, much closer football game. I think a lot of people thought after this. And then the field goal block picked up in the bear game. Notice this down the sideline, 92 yards. Bracey Walker, bless his heart. How wonderful is it to go 92 yards for a touchdown? Sucking win there, though, TV. Yeah, I don't blame him. I've been sucking more than win, 10 to 7 at that point. Lions. Thomas Jones in from two yards out, making it 14 to 13. The Bears, and then Joy Harrington rolling right, finding Azakim back of the end zone, four yard touchdown. It's 20 to 14, fourth quarter. Lions. Big day today for Sean Alexander. Two touchdowns, this six yard virgin right here. Second on the day, 14 to nothing. And then, once again, we go to the Ram game. That's 21 to 7, Seattle over New Orleans. And then it's Marshall Falk. Whoops. Sean Alexander again. My bad right there. Coming around with the backside. His third touchdown of the day. And now 21 to 7. It was Seattle over New York. Now. Who said Emmett Smith was finished? I didn't let your touchdown run for an Emmett putting all 1,000 points of his career. 10 to 9, Arizona. Ball, Jamal Bolger. Turnovers continue to plague him in the first half. Three turnovers, and then this touchdown pass as he finds Isaac Bruce on the quick slant. And it's 17 to 10, St. Louis over Arizona. All knotted up in Pittsburgh. 21 all. Boy, the Raiders have come back in that one. And you know what? Surprise, Baltimore. Surprise. Baltimore, the stout defense. Right now behind 20 to 3 to the Cleveland Browns. Carson Palmer, second year number one draft choice out of USC, handing the football off. This time to Sam Court. He the ball is not loose. And Donnie Abrams there scoops it up. Scaffrey 40 yard, 41 yards for the touchdown. Jets are up 14 to 10. Curtis Martin, 196 yards rushing on the day. 24 coming on this touchdown run. 31 to 24. Jets over. Cincinnati. And you take a look at the Bills, 10-6 over the Jaguars. That late in the fourth there. And a final San Diego, LaDainian Tomlinson, a one-yard touchdown run, but he had a big day with the victory there. Hey, look here. Take a look at Joe Gibbs' staff. Uh, less than 180 total yards the defense of Washington gave up to Tampa Bay. Greg Williams, nice fit. Yeah, everybody talks about the offense of Joe Gibbs, but... Picking up Greg Williams as a defensive coach it really was a, a, a nice move. Everybody recognized Greg Williams being one of the top defensive coaches around and holding Tampa Bay to 10 points. Now, one thing, it's a blitzing style of defense. Early in the year, that blitzing style of defense can give a team problems. Now, as teams work on all those blitzes, it'll be a little bit of a problem for them later on down the year. Well, there's a reason why Greg Williams is making more as a defensive coordinator in Washington than he was as a head coach in Buffalo because he's pretty darn good. He takes advantage of his personnel. I believe, as Troy Aikman mentioned earlier in the broadcast, this will be a breakout year for LeVar Arrington. He's been a star, but he could become a superstar under Greg Williams. And I also think you take a guy like Sean Taylor, who didn't start today, but he goes on. As the season goes on, he puts people in a position to be successful. Bowen is a great example. Who's Bowen? Well, he's had an unspectacular career. A couple of sacks today. Great acquisition. Just great organization. And the one thing you expect from Joe Gibbs when he came back, he would bring organi organization back to this organization. Mm -hmm. And they were there. They didn't panic when the game got close. Another trademark of a Joe Gibbs coach football team. And Those excellent job of them. Extremely organized. You yeah. know what? Yeah. Terry Bradshaw, to his credit, though, 
tempering the enthusiasm just a bit because it's oh, no no honestly so because it's only it's only one game but again is how we said organization jimmy talked about the staff the ingredients are there I, I think the biggest thing is compared to a year ago how much better they are yep. all right second half of our game's double header coming your way right after this you're watching the world's leading cricketing nations have their eyes on just one prize, the ICC Champions Trophy. Who will be crowned the finest one-day team, Australia versus...